All right. We got this ending. It's been a while. Oh boy. You held yourself together pretty well. I'm glad. <laughs> But yes, we chose a different door this time, and are now in the... What is this one called? I don't remember. The... Um... The five oh. door. Yes, we went through the number five door. We're in the first class cabin? And we're just diving right in! <laughs> Cabin deck quarters, yes. <laughs> Doesn't look like there's a keyhole in this door. True, but there's some strange device in the U of one. So, this is the locking thing. It's flashing red. That's usually not a good sign. Is that a microphone? It looks like a satellite dish. Glad to see you alive, Snake. How you doing? <laughs> Let me see. Mm. Well, judging by the feel of it, I would guess that we are meant to produce some sort of sound. Audio's a little loud in my headphones. Let me turn that down. And this device will sense it and unlock. Hmm. Some sort of lock, apparently. It's connected to a microphone. The exit. It's locked tight. We can't get it open. A bed with a canopy. I've seen things like this in movies and stuff, but never in real life. True, you don't see too many these days. I can't see the details, obviously, but... I imagine it's one of those princess beds Clover is so fond of. Clover... wants one of these? Yes. She wants a princess bed. Didn't I say that? You think it doesn't suit her? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. Ah, Junpei, judge her by appearances, will you? And, well, you should not. A large bed with a canopy. Man, this makes me miss my own bed. And sleep. Is there anything else about this bed besides the pillow? Anything under the pillow? Score plate A. I see. This feels like glass. A rectangular plate of glass. Is there something written on the surface? Yeah, it's a sheet of music with a couple of A notes. Just A's? Yeah, that's it. Kinda weird, huh? A transparent music score sheet. Apparently made from glass. It has a number of A notes on it. It took Junpei by surprise. Snake, usually so calm and collected, suddenly began to move. Mm. He stared about the room almost frantically, clearly looking for something. No, Junpei thought, not staring. After all, he's blind. <laughs> blind or not, Snake was clearly attempting to do something. At last, Junpei could no longer contain his curiosity. What's wrong? You got weird all of a sudden. Snake waited a moment before answering. I heard something... strange. Something strange? Ah, well. Never mind. It doesn't seem to be anything suspicious. I don't wish to toot my own horn. But my auditory senses are considerably more advanced than those of most humans. Too bad that organ key was the other ending. Oh, yes. I notice even the slightest of noises. Right. Are you gonna tell me you can hear a needle drop from a mile away? <laughs> no. Such a thing would be impossible. However, by listening to the sound of footsteps and breathing, as well as sound echoing off the environment, I can locate most objects. This is true. It's actually very interesting. Humans can, and there's proof of it, develop something akin to echolocation. It basically is echolocation. Oh yeah, that's right. When Clover fell on the big staircase a little while ago, you were at her side immediately. So that was... Hmm. Yes, I could hear it happening. In fact, I can run quite fast. Certainly as fast as you. 
And should someone attempt to start a fight with me, I am quite confident that I could defeat them. Oh, really? Junpei was somewhat taken aback by this revelation. He stared at Snake, skeptical. You don't believe me, do you? Care to give it a try? I must warn you. You'll no doubt regret it. Uh... Well, I suppose that's enough playing around. Let's resume our search, shall we? I just remember the little comic where he was like, all right, you asked for it, bring him up, and he's not facing Junpei, and he's like, uh, I'm over here, and then the next panel, he turns 180 and punches him in the face, like, lol, just kidding. <laughs> With a small, self-satisfied smile, Snake turned and walked away from Junpei. There's nothing under the pillow. I just keep clicking on it. It's a small round chair. Looks like it probably goes to the vanity. A white desk. Feels kind of fancy. I can't look at the lights. A bed. Junpei, I cannot help but notice your interest in the bed. I was looking at it from the wrong angle. Perhaps you are hoping we will spend time on it together. <laughs> you, I, don't say stuff like, damn, that's not a mental image I want. It's a bed. I don't want anybody getting the wrong idea, so I'm just gonna leave it alone, okay? The lights are lit. Amazing. A window, there's an iron plate nailed to it. It's totally a table with a mirror. Ah, yes. You know, that sort of thing is known as a vanity. Were you aware of that, Junpei? Of course, vanity also refers to self-love, conceit, and narcissism. As such, you could say that every day when a woman looks into one of these, she is staring at her own conceit and narcissism. <laughs> Doesn't that strike you as terribly sad? An antique vanity. There's nothing in the drawer. Yep, totally empty. A map! What's this? This isn't a score. Is this a map of the ship? A map? There's a map of the ship here? Yeah. Then I imagine it will prove very helpful. You'd best hold on to it, Junpei. Okay. Joink! A music stand. Well, might as well put this glass plate on it. Oh, hmm. Is something wrong? It's kind of hard to see the notes. Maybe if I put something under them? Hmm. A background for the notes. I can't see the notes very well with the glass being so transparent. If I just had something to slide underneath. A piano keyboard. What is Snake doing? He can't play, can he? This piano. There's something amiss with the keys. You mean it's out of tune or something? No, no, not that. It's properly tuned, just... Well, the sounds are clearly purposefully different. The C key doesn't yield the C, but rather a different note entirely. The same goes for the D keys. They play some other note. Huh? Why do you think it's like that? Isn't it painfully obvious? Zero modified it in some way. This piano, you see, is part of one of the puzzles Zero has set for us. Perhaps if we play the keys in the correct order, something will happen. In other words, we need to play a song on the piano. I believe so. Hmm. These keys are all messed up. Oh yeah, that's right, I got the score plate. Or yeah, but you can't do anything with it. Not right now, at least. Oh, hallway. A leather suitcase. There's nothing inside. I can tell by the weight, and it makes no noise when shaken. It's a leather suitcase. Unfortunately, there's nothing inside. It's... let's spell dead with the notes. Yeah. There's something in here. 
Score plate C. Yes, yes. So this well, this feels like glass. A rectangle of glass. Transparent, I assume. I can feel something printed on the surface. What is it? A sheet of music with some C notes on it. Transparent. Yes. No, can't do that. There's nothing in here. This safe is locked. It's one of those dialogues. Where did you come from? It doesn't have a key. Just need to get the dials in the right place, and it'll open. Hi, Tara! Hello. Did you find anything, Seven? Nope. How about you, Snake? I also found nothing. It's the safe with a dialogue on it. We won't be able to open it until we know the right numbers. Not much. We stared at a bed, and then Snake was like, you want to lay on it together? And Junpei was like, why did you say that? So, now he says this. Oh god, it lost track of me. <laughs> My mic. <laughs> Wait, what if I look at the vanity from a different angle? Oh, well, this fabric feels great! I bet that chair is really comfortable. A small round chair. It's really soft. Squish. Squish, squish. Squish, squish, squish. Junpei, how long do you intend to abuse that chair? I suggest you finish soon. Otherwise, I may be forced to teach you a lesson in physical pain. His face might look calm, but there's a monster under there. Gotta admit, I'm a little scared. Yes, we are back where June is with the other team. I don't want to get my ass kicked by a blind guy, so I think I'm gonna leave the chair alone. For now. It's a white desk. Snake's rubbing it. Hmm, this is a high-quality desk. Teak, or perhaps mahogany. Wow, how can you tell? Oh, I have my ways. It's a white desk. Seems a little fancy to me. Well, at least we've got light. What? How was Tails? It was good. Huh? Well, what the hell, man? It's... it's just a light. Uh, oh, of... of course. Huh? The lights are on. It's a light switch. Nothing happens when I press it. The lights, huh? Nope. Doesn't look like there's anything hidden there. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, do you want to look at this? This is some kind of transparent glass plate. It's got a C note on the staff here a couple of times. Seven. You can read music? Huh. Didn't call that one. What? You think I'm some kind of idiot? Yeah, I know how to read music. Transparent. Apparently it has a number of- Okay, he has nothing to say about the other one. What kind of music is this? And there we are in the mirror. What a pair! A college kid and a terrifying giant of a man in a beanie. Stuck in a cramped bathroom. With this beast of a man... What would my parents say? Hmm? Something wrong, Junpei? Looked real sad all of a sudden. Oh, uh, no. Nothing. <laughs> There's a mirror here. Well, the sink's clean. Any water? Nothing's coming out. We've got the faucet on all the way, but I can't hear anything. Hmm. It's a sink. The water doesn't appear to be working. Testing, testing. Hey, it's great to see you all here. I just flew in from New York. Boy, are my arms tired. Yes, thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Try the veal. That's not a mic, Seven. It's just a shower head. What? What the hell? 
It's a dry shower. It doesn't seem like I can get any water to come out of it. <laughs> this faucet must be for putting water in the bathtub. <laughs> Seven, your jokes are tired. <laughs> this faucet must be for putting water in the bathtub. The bathtub is full of water. Is there ash or something in this water? It's kind of gray. Let's just pull the plug. No, hold up. Maybe we can... I don't know. Use it for something? Use it for something? The bathtub's full of gross, cloudy water. The water's dirty, but the rest of the bathtub looks comparatively clean. Almost like the dirty water was moved there from somewhere else intentionally. Hmm. Well, let's get out of the bathroom. This is a suitcase made of leather, the color of rich mahogany. Oh, shoot. Looks like there's nothing in it. It's a leather suitcase. Dang, nothing in there. Oh-ho! Score plate G! It's a rectangular piece of glass. You can see right through it. It has a couple of G notes written on it. Huh, I wonder what that means. I get it. You're gonna use this vase, right? That's pretty clever, Junpei. We just gotta fill this thing with water. What? What are you talking about? Oh man, you don't get it? Just grab that face and take a look around. You'll figure it out soon enough. Looks like a vase. Maybe you could use that. It'll probably hold quite a bit. Look at it. Look inside it. There was once a vase on this table. The toilet. Wow. There's some toilet paper on the wall there. Doesn't even look suspicious. It's a toilet. Doesn't seem to be anything in the toilet or the tank. There's nothing. Junpei, look! There's a hand coming out of the toilet! <laughs> Just a joke there, kid. Not funny, man. Too old for this shit. <laughs> Incontinence is a problem many older men struggle with, but there's help. <sighs> it's old. Alright, we'll fill it with water. The bathtub's full of gross, cloudy water. Yeah. We fill this vase up, then we can toss it. Huh? Not really sure what he's saying. Whatever. Let's just get this vase full of water. Vase filled with water! Hey Junpei, what are you doing over there? Only one thing to do now that you got that thing full of water. Come on, what are you waiting for? Huh? Take what down? Man, this water's dirty. Can't see more than four inches or so. Can't see anything down there. Hmm. You think? Think what? on the end of this chain. All right, why don't we just drain this water? Yeah, good plan. Vase filled with gross water. Find some flowers. All right, there's that. Where's that thing? A good tug ought to be enough to get it out. Huh? There's a plate sitting at the bottom of the bathtub. There's a plug for a bathtub on the end of the chain. Or plate D. Transparent place, plate made of glass, yes? It's a sheet of music with a couple of D notes on it. There's nothing in the bathtub anymore. A mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the toughest, sexiest, and most beautiful young man of them all? That is, of course, the seven. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, yes. I'm gonna bother Snake now. Hey, Snake! <laughs> Look at this score plate. A glass rectangle. Where did you find this? It was sitting in the bathtub under the water. Really? Underwater. Hmm. It's a rectangular plate of some sort. And made of glass, it seems. It's got a music staff and a couple of G notes on it, but nothing else. G. So, you filled the vase with water, have you? I assume you intend to dump it onto Seven's head! <laughs> hmm, not a bad idea. Very well. I would appreciate it if you would put this plan to action post-haste. I forgot to show it to him before we put water in it. <laughs> oh well. I just love how there's stuff like that. There are a couple of lights on the wall here. This is some sort of antique desk. Makes sense though, I guess. This whole room's full of antiques. You get a nice handful of cash for all the stuff in here. An old-fashioned desk adds a little class to the room. Somebody spent a lot of time carving the legs of this chair. It'll snap like a twig if Seven sits on it, though. Mind your own business! A chair with intricately carved legs. There's a couple of lights on the wall here. It's a heavy piece of paper that's been folded in half. It is score printed on the front of it. Score. That's gotta mean musical score. If that's true, then the score we just found was probably in here. At least at some point. There's a cover for musical score skating on the table. It's a chair. A chair, huh? That chair looks nice. Mind if I take a load off? Oh no, I, I took... I took music. I'm just like... <laughs> Start to emote. That was those arrests. <laughs> took more like whole notes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't think the person who made this did music theory. <laughs> I think you'd be doing the opposite. That chair does look pretty comfortable. Hey, Junpei, where are you going? Didn't we come out of that door? No point to going back there. All that's out there are a locked number door and... a dead body. Or what's left of it. Yeah. The ninth man's body is on the other side of that door. Maybe I don't want to go there. out there after all. I can't look the light switch. There's an expensive looking chair sitting over there. Okay. This couch looks just big enough for three people. I mean, m maybe, but I think for the sake of, like, this game, they simplified something. I, there's a lot of research into a lot of different subjects. Looks perfect for me. What? Perfect for an elegant gentleman like myself. The couch looks a lot more elegant. Hey! Something you aren't saying! Uh, never mind. The couch does look pretty elegant. Doesn't really go with seven, though. Like, I think they're all just, like, dots. But, the, like, the pixels make it look hard to see. This was originally on the DS. <laughs> a fireplace, huh? Don't see one of these too often. A lot of people these days with real fireplaces and real fires. Are sorry, aren't there aren't a lot of people these days with real fireplaces and real fires? Ooh, I'm sorry. It's a fireplace. It's a fireplace. Hey, Junker, what's this? The Thinker, uh, by August Roden. <laughs> right on. A fireplace. I think there's something in the back of the fireplace behind the fire. Right on, buddy. Do it! Do what? Come on, it's not hard to figure out. You seriously- Throw that shit on there! Okay, I'll take this out now. 
What are you waiting for? Hurry up and do it! After we put out this fire, we're gonna grab that thing in the back, right? There's something behind it. <laughs> He's so mad. Got a vase filled with water. It's heavy. Can't just throw it at the grate, though. Gotta pour the water right onto the fire itself. <laughs> Alright, time to put this fire out. Yeah. It might be just because of whatever tool they used to uh, up the res. Made, uh, made some things look kind of funky. About time, buddy. Let's do it. Here we go. Huh. <laughs> Good job. Another success. That fire didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Alright, let's just pull this out now. Don't want to get burned, so let's pull down the sleeves. Score plate. It's a ceramic plate of some kind. Looks like a blank sheet of music. As Junpei tucked the plate into his pocket... Oh. Mm. Seven cried out and stumbled, his balance lost. He threw out a hand and caught the wall in time to steady himself and avoid the floor, but his face was flushed and he looked startled. Hey, Seven. What the hell was that? Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I just felt a little dizzy, that's all. Seven rubbed a couple of fingers across his brow and then shook his head, as if to clear it. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> First memory loss, now I'm getting dizzy for no reason. <sighs> uh, memory loss? Jupe couldn't hide the surprise in his voice. Seven, for his part, seemed unconcerned. Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? Yeah, I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. Didn't realize I hadn't told you. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're talking about amnesia, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, why are you an amnesiac? What happened to you? If I knew that, I wouldn't really be one, would I? Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess that's true. Whoops. <laughs> Junpei paused for a moment and stared at Seven. Are you telling the truth? Huh? Well, you look pretty calm for somebody who doesn't remember anything. If you've really got amnesia, shouldn't you be, like, upset or confused or something? Well, sure. I mean, I was pretty confused when I woke up down on D-Deck. But that was a while ago. I've had some time to get used to it. After a while, I figured it wasn't worth the trouble of worrying about it. After all, why worry about something I can't change? Well, people usually don't stay amnesiacs forever. I figure it'll work itself out eventually. But that's... that's it? That's it. Uh, uh, Alright, that's enough talking for now. Let's get back to work. Seven gave Junpei a look. The younger man wasn't sure how to interpret and turned to walk away. How are you fine with something like that? Somehow, though, Junpei didn't find his reassurances very reassuring. I guess we found all- okay, yeah. Hmm, a rectangular plate. This texture. It feels like it's probably ceramic. You know, fired clay, like a plate or a bowl. What color is it? Well, it's white. I played piano for a little bit. I played French horn for a bit. <laughs> I just heard someone scream downstairs. <laughs> I don't know what they said, though. Uh, and then I sang. Oh, it's white. Is there anything written on it? Yeah, staff. Like, for music. No notes, though. Huh. Interesting. How strange. 
Music stand. Seems this is a good place as any to put this music we found. Just gotta put the ceramic plate on the bottom. I probably said fuck. <laughs> and then stack the glass plates on top of it. Alright, good. Sweet, now I can play the music. Junior, would you be so kind as to play the piano? I am unable to, you see. I'm sure I needn't tell you, but the keys on this piano are not what you might expect them to be. C won't be C, D won't be D, and so forth. You must listen carefully to determine which keys to strike. Do you understand? Yeah. Alright, let's give this a shot. And we're done. Music is not my forte. Wait, what was that noise? Junpei, we did it. it looks like it worked. I heard something unlock over by the exit. Let's go. Plan. Stand. Bow. Be seated. Well, I guess he hasn't forgotten that. At least Snake thinks it's funny. <laughs> yes, I suppose that was the classroom bell, wasn't it? I don't imagine that's what Zero was thinking of, however. No, no, Zero almost certainly meant to suggest Westminster, not middle school. Westminster? The palace in London that plays host these days to the Houses of Parliament. You've heard of Big Ben, the famous clock tower, yes? Big Ben plays that very collection of notes on the hour. London. Capital of England, huh? At any rate, the door is now unlocked. Let's leave this place. Immediately. <laughs> safe. It's a safe. A safe, huh? The exit's open. Yes, strange that we didn't need to open this to achieve our goal. Do you think it's important? I, I wonder what's in there. Hmm. Hmm. Now that Snake's over- now that Seven's over here... Does any- does he have anything to say? Don't know what it's- that it's real important, though. Boring. Weird! The things he says are different. Hmm. 
All right, let's go. I did it. We did it. You found it. Okay. I'm going to get my food now. There is no music for at this moment, but I will going I will be back. I'm back. <gasps> yes. I am returned and I have food. Yes, a wild me appears. <laughs> Fried fish. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. So many things are happening. So much news today. <clears throat> One of my favorite, like, casual games on the 3DS is getting a sequel. The Nintendo Direct announced it. Fantasy Life 2. Oh, uh, yeah, some stuff happened earlier <laughs> in the stream that I learned about that I was like, oh, <laughs> oh no. Fantasy Life 2. Fantasy Life is a a level 5 game where you live in a town where you get to have a life or essentially like a job. You can have multiple. You can change them constantly, but it's like fantasy. So there's 
Yeah. <laughs> Not my people. Famous people. Or people, people with more fame than me. <laughs> uh, and so there, there are fighting classes. Like you could be a knight, you could be a mer, like you, could, yeah, you could be a paladin, you could be a mercenary, or you could be a wizard, or you could be. What was the fourth one? I don't remember. Archer. And then there are the material gathering lives which are minor woodcutter fishermen hmm trying to remember the last one minor woodcutter fishermen and there might not be another gathering class but then you have the crafting lives like the uh carpenter the uh blacksmith the chef or the cook and the tailor and you basically just like m the objective uh, in that is just make money be happy. Be a bunch of different classes of character constantly changing to up, like, points and stuff and build a house and it's fun. But there's an actual plot. And it's a very silly plot, but there is an actual plot. You are met right before you are to get the pass. Um. To allow you to get a life. <laughs> because jobs are called life. Um, you meet a butterfly, and she's like, can I, I need to speak with the, like, the king, can we, can we, uh, work together? But it's such a fun little game. There's so much to do. So I'm assuming, because it's a Nintendo Direct, that it's going to be on the Switch. Which means, I'm gonna get me as a new game to play with my friends! Because while you can't do the main story with your friends, once um, co-op is unlocked, you can do, like, regular quests together and fish and fight uh, monsters and stuff. But it's got, it's got such a cute art style. Actually, since we're talking about it, I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna pull up, uh, like, screenshots of the first game. <laughs> and the game would be over. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let me... Open some tabs of, like, screenshots of stuff. That's not what I meant to do. Open image, a new tab. Uh... Let's see. Yeah, here's the cooking. There's a screenshot of the mini game for cooking. All right. You ready for this? This is the box art. And these are screenshots of the game. <laughs> and these are all the classes you could be. You're not ready. I'm sorry. This one's really small. Let me increase the size of that a little bit. It was fun! It's just a little game. Good times. I still play it off and on. Like on my 3DS when I want to. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway. 
I have fried fish and hush puppies, homemade. But we're gonna do more zero escape game, because that's what you're here for. <laughs> he came out of the door and into a long, straight hallway. Another hallway? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good one, Jumpy. Hmm? He paused for a moment and turned around to look behind him. That should do it. Seven was bent over, apparently doing something to the door. What's he up to? Junpei had spoke more or less to himself, but apparently Seven had heard anyway. The larger man stood up and turned to Junpei. I was just putting one of those plates in there. It ought to keep the door from locking again. Now we can come back here anytime we want, right? Ah, why would you want to come back here? Snake was a reason. Snake was a re Snake was the reasonable one. I don't. Seven thought about it for a moment before he answered. I might like to play a little piano. <clears throat> piano. Come on, let's get moving. We aren't out of this yet. I'm sorry if the mic picked that up. Without waiting for an answer, Seven started off down the hallway. Well then. Snake shrugged, sighed, and qu quietly followed Seven. Mm. That's a lie, Junpei thought to himself. Can't say I could ever imagine Seven playing the piano. He couldn't use the piano in there anyway. The keyboard's a mess. But why would he want to leave the door unlocked then? <sighs> I have no clue. Hey, wait for me! Junpei frowned, took one last look at the door, and then walked away towards his companions. After some time in the hallway, they emerged into a larger, more open area. Whoa, a metal grate? A large metal grate, like the door of a jail, divided it in half. Why is this thing... <sighs> they shook it for a while, but as they expected, it did not move. Figures. Are those elevators over there? No way to know if they're working or not from here. Oh, uh, there's a door just to the left of this grate. Unfortunately, however, it was locked and refused to open. Sounds like it's locked. Yep. Junpei took a moment to examine the left side of the room. Stairs leading down. They're blocked by the grate, though. But this here seems accessible. So we can open it? Nah, I think it's locked too. Look. In the center of the door was the small keyhole. Next to the keyhole, a small symbol had been carved into the metal. What's this mark? The female symbol? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just great. <laughs> he wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Snake, naturally, was somewhat more sure. Ah, the Venus symbol, I imagine. Do you recall the similar symbols near the large central stairway? They reference many of the solar bodies. Oh, th that's right! The Sun, Saturn, and Earth. So, as you can see, that one is likely not the woman symbol, but a Venus symbol. So I assume. Hmm. Hold on. Where's Seven? While they had been discussing the symbols, Junpei now realized Seven had slipped away. His absence now felt, Snake and Junpei turned to look for their missing companion. Ah, there he is, down that hallway. Seven had left them to head down the hallway, extending to the right of the stairs. This way, Snake. Follow me. Junpei grabbed Snake to lead him in the right direction, and they both headed off after Seven. Before long, the three of them stood in front of a door. Hmm, I wonder if this door will... It was a French door. How about that? It opens. Junpei tested the door and realized that, unlike so many others that they'd encountered, it was unlocked. Almost as though he was afraid it would suddenly lock itself, Junpei threw the door open.
She stepped inside. Oh, wow. It took only a moment for Junpei to take in his new surroundings. Is this some kind of casino? Sure looks like one. Before Junpei could comment further, a noise from behind made him turn around. Snake was shaking the door they'd just come through. Well, this is troubling. As Seven and Junpei watched, he threw up his hands in frustration and then kicked the door for good measure. It seems we are once again locked in. There was no reason to panic, however. Even if that door was open, it's not like we had anywhere to go that way. So we must find another exit, then. All right, guys, let's split up and search this room. Come on, no dawdling, let's go. Quickly now. Spurred to action by Seven's words, Junpei and Snake began to examine the room. Casino! Ugh. Fortunately, that means that I have to move my keyboard back closer to me. Ugh. Okay. Didn't accidentally press anything. Now I'm gonna take another bite of my fish. Oh my god, please, breading, separate. Separate so that I can eat that peas! chairs. Hey Junpei, I just found this on the shelf. Did Br Breading listen to your plays? It did. Hmm? Playing card? Four of spades. There's a whole lot of glasses on that shelf. Doesn't look like there's anything else back there, though. Junpei, I found this on the counter. It feels like a playing card. Seven of spades. Oh. Well, will you look at that? Someone left a bottle of booze here. Don't mind if I do. Gluck, gluck, gluck. Oh, that hits a spot. Feels like my throat's burning. Damn, you really drink it. You don't even know how long it's been there. There's a bottle with some booze and it's sitting on the counter. One more sip. I don't think so. I'm cutting you off, pal. <laughs> Seven looks like he'd very much like to get acquainted with that bottle. <laughs> Counter's pretty well polished. The chandeliers hang chandelier-like from the ceiling. That hat makes you look like you've got candle ears. No, take that back. You're a chandelier! Junpei, why do you talk to yourself so frequently? <laughs> Don't bully him, Snake. He's trying to cope. Those are some strange looking chandeliers. They look kind of like the UFOs from that movie, Michelle's Farm Tools. What the hell kind of movie is that? A number of luxurious chandeliers hang from the ceiling. No, don't bully him! What did he do to deserve this? Door shut tight. It won't open. 
This chair goes to the poker table. Hmm, feels really soft. It's a chair. The seat is nice and soft. Squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze, 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 squeeze! <laughs> Are you quite finished with the chair, Junpei? If you don't stop this behavior at once, I will be forced to teach you a lesson you will not soon forget. His face is as calm as ever, but his voice... Terrifying. I don't want to get beat up, so maybe I'll just leave the chair alone for now. <laughs> Second time that's happened. Well, at any rate, this gate is very impressive. Seven only remembers the important things. <laughs> it feels like... granite? It seems to be elaborately decorated in several places. Shame I cannot see it. There's a fi there's firewood in the fireplace. Oh, at least this one isn't lit like the one in the first class cabin. Maybe that's why it feels a little chilly in here. Junpei, I can feel a frame here. What sort of painting is it? Uh, clouds, maybe? Clouds? Well, maybe it's a rabbit. A rabbit? Well, if it's not that, it might be a close-up of some teeth. Oh, I guess there's actually nothing there. Just a blank piece of a canvas in a frame. I see. How strange. There's a weird-looking thing floating in here. It's lit up by the lights. Hmm? Didn't think I'd find a card here. Six of spades. Wait, when those two lights turn on, I heard something from the bottom of the fireplace. More games need rabbits. What was that? I heard something down there. Casino coin! There are a whole bunch of coins stuffed into this Veller bag. Look at all these coins. Perhaps these coins will allow us to convince the machines to move. Oh. What was the thing again? I need to remember. Club Spade Heart. I wanted to look at the chair. Plate says three. It's a coin slot. How convenient, seeing as we only just now discovered a blue bag full of coins. So I've got the symbols for heart, spade, and diamond here. Main body of the slot machine. There's a coin slot on the upper left. It's the drawer they use to pick up money. It's locked tight. I can't get it to open. Fine. All right, let's put the coins from that bag in there. What happened? I heard an odd noise. Uh, well, to be honest, I don't know. Press some of the buttons and smack the shmee- The shmeen! <laughs> the machine! Once or twice, but nothing happened. Oh, looks like the coins got stuck. Oh, dear. Well, usually- Change those coins for prizes is the best part, though. The prize, huh? I wonder what might happen if we were to match all the reels. I imagine the prize would be the tools that would lead to our escape. A slot machine, I see. There seems to be a coin slot on the upper left corner. Perhaps we should put the coins we have recently acquired in there. Heart, spade, and diamond. Hmm? What do you mean? The symbols on the reels. They're the same as the playing card symbols that I saw over the fireplace. But this is different. Junpei, are the reels the only place where you see these symbols? Huh? Don't you think the symbols might be found in other places as well, apart from the reels? He's confused. Salt machine stands, I don't see anything suspicious. Come on, you little bastards, I only need one of you. Oh! This one worked. Seven, seven, seven. Yes! Triple seven! And I think I hear something unlocking in there. Impressive, too. It would appear to be unlocked now. There is something akin to a drawer in the bottom part of this machine, yes? That is a pickup drawer for the dividend. Probably the lock for the drawer got unlocked. 
please open it if you would. What is it? Is there something in there? Yeah, a playing card. And this? A key with the Venus symbol on it! Excellent, Junpei. Now we will be able to open the gate. And we just need to figure out how to get out of this room. Correct. Come on, Junpei. Hurry up! And he's off. There was a playing card and a Venus key. Better put the key in my pocket for later. As for the card... The Two of Spades. Oh. I don't need to use this for uh, anything. Darn it. Third rail doesn't match. Short version, I lose. Oh, a light. <sighs> Wait, did Snake just tense up? Uh, hey, what's up? It's like you tried to say smack the shit out of it by combining shit and machine to make shmeen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, never mind. No need to worry. Huh? The lights glow yellow, filling the room with their light. Hey, can you touch that thing? Yeah, I'm a pretty good jumper if I say so myself. Here I go! Alright, Theta, enjoy your lurk. Chandeliers hang chandelier like from the ceiling. There are some chairs. They seem perfectly normal and cherry. There are four chairs surrounding the square table. That square table. Looks like a mahjong table. Do you play mahjong, Seven? Uh, maybe? I don't remember exactly, but... I do remember a couple of hands, and some of the rules, so I figure I must have played it at some point. Excellent. Once we vacated this vessel, I should like to play a game with you. Can you, uh, play? So long as you tell me which tiles I am eliminated, yes, I believe I have at least enough skill to defeat an amateur. However, I must ask you to remove the red tiles when we play. It does look like a mahjong table, but I think this is probably for poker. There's nothing on it. What do you mean? Check out that stained glass. How beautiful. What? Huh? The stained glass is colored pieces of glass placed together in a frame. As I've said many times before, I need only touch it to know. I can at least discern the... I, I, I have zero clue what you're referring to. Basic structure. Probably means the stained glass doesn't look outside. Oh. Wow, this place is like super amazing. What's this place for? Probably for playing Baccarat. Looks like a little off- it looks a little off, though. Yeah, look at the middle of the table. There's something mounted on it, see? Suddenly, Seven began to speak. Ah, Baccarat. You ever played Junpei? Junpei shook his head. He'd barely even heard of the game. Oh! Ruining a Mahjong game! Right, right. <laughs> Sorry, that was like... I, I just, my brain was not thinking about that at all. No, uh, never. <laughs> Alright then, how about I explain the rules to you a bit? Sure. Oh, shit. Dang it. Dang it, fish! See, Baccarat is kind of an unusual game. You've got the banker and the player. The whole point is that you guess which one's gonna win. And whether the banker or the player wins...
It all depends on their hands. The way each hand works is different from other games, too. You see, you take the number from the ones place after you add up the value of all your cards. Whoever gets the number closest to nine wins. If your number is smaller than your opponent's, you lose. And that's it. That's the explanation. Got it? Such a weird game that w ended up being so perfect for the way this game works. Well, actually, there's a lot more to it. Strategy, details, that sort of stuff. But what I just told you sums up the core of the game pretty well. The single digit of the sum of all the cards you have. The strongest hand is a nine, and the weakest hand is a zero. You just ignore the number in the 10 spot. Do you get it? Uh, yeah. He hadn't been asked for it, but Seven's explanation, rushed though it had been, was helpful. Well, uh, maybe half of it, enough. I got a chance at winning the game if I played now. However, we have no way of knowing if the puzzle in the Baccarat table makes use of those rules, and if it does, in what manner. Then I guess we try everything. Feeling more confident, if only slightly, Junpei approached the Baccarat table. Hmm. Hey, Seven, are we really supposed to play Baccarat? It's a Baccarat tape. The hell would- what the hell else would we do? Hmm. Ah, stop worrying about it. It's real simple. What's the opponent's hand? Well, there's an eight in that glass case. Alright, and that's your opponent's number. If that's the case, what three cards do we need to get that number? Three cards? There are a couple of indentations with white, with white lines around them, yeah? Those mean we gotta put down three cards. So? Place three cards here and defeat the opponent's eight. That's what I gotta do, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Something tells me those aren't the only rules. Alright, let's give it a shot. Alright, let's give this a try. I just put down these three cards. Yes, open for me. Great. You did it, Chunpei. You think it's telling us to take the eight card? Come on, let's grab it. All right, let's take this card. Eight of spades. Three cards I put down are stuck to the table. They won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Got the eight card. Don't need to hang around here anymore. Lights shine with a bright yellow glow. Damn it! This isn't exactly working the way I expected. It's locked, isn't it? Is there a keyhole? There is, I can't find it. Are you sure? Well, there must be some way to unlock it. Let's look around a little more, shall we? It looks like a keyhole right there. But all right. It says nine. Yeah, looks like that cover's hiding something. If this is the cover, then maybe it opens up. Probably does. Seems the card is attached to the panel. And attached very well, it seems. If you don't mind, what sort of card is this? It's a playing card. The Ace of Spades, in fact. This is a card slot. Looks like we need to put a playing card in here. Alright, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Easy enough. And in you go. Hey, alright, it opened up. It seems we have another device to contend with, yes? There are three slots in this one. 
Let's see here. Three slots for cards, and there's a nine right below them. So, that probably means we're gonna make nine with the three cards we put in the slots, right? Just like what we did over at the Baccarat table. Alright, let's give it a shot. Except there are only three cards left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I put all the cards we had left into the slots. What happens now? Is that- Yes! I did hear something from the exit! Excellent work, Junpei. Wonderful. It seems the exit is unlocked. Let's go. Alright, let's go! Freedom! A short one. Junpei and his companions ran out of the casino and into a large open room. A room, in fact, that they had been in once before. There was little to surprise them here, there. They already knew what their next step had to be. This way! The iron gate still stood in place, locked tight, blocking the stairway. And right in the center of it... The keyhole with the Venus symbol. The Venus key should work here. Wasting no time, he pulled it out and shoved it into the keyhole. He turned it. With the distinctive sound of metal on metal, he felt the lock click open. It sounds like it did. All right, let's get this thing open. No problem. Let me help with this one. Junpei grabbed the handle on the left side, and Seven took the handle on the right. On Junpei's signal, they both pushed and the gate creaked open. It sounds as though you have opened it. We should be able to reach Sea Deck now, I imagine. Snake, uh, are you gonna be all right? I mean, the stairs. Please, do not do yourself the embarrassment of underestimating me. I would be unlikely to trip even if I were running backwards. Good to hear. Let's move. At Seven's words, they leapt onto the stairs and jogged quickly down them. In no time at all, they found themselves on Sea Deck. Everything looks okay here. We should check the next deck down, just in case. When he reached the water, he called back up to Snake and Seven. Just what I thought. D Deck is completely underwater. Just like the bottom of the central staircase. The surface of the water below them was flat, like a mirror. I'm just glad the water level hasn't changed much. Back to the Sea Deck, then. Now, how about we check out what's here? They began searching around and taking stock of what was on Sea Deck. There are two elevators over there, which means it's probably the same upstairs. There's a card reader between them, and another weird mark. Hey, uh, check it out. It's the symbol for Lotus. What? See? <laughs> it's got the woman symbol, and then it's got the devil horns, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see it. No two ways about it. That was a pretty good one, kid. Seven tussled Junpei's hair in what he likely thought to be a friendly manner. Junpei feared his neck might break, even though it was clear Seven had kept his strength in check. Oh, oh, would you watch it, man? Whoo, that hurts. You're gonna break my neck. What are you talking about? The human body ain't that weak. Maybe this'll toughen you up, huh? <laughs> If we were looking for a devil, we've got one right here. When you did these in the other order, it seemed so weird since they barely interacted at that point. Yeah, it is kind of odd. Thankfully, a snake interrupted. After Junpei's observation, he'd gone over to examine the card reader. This is a Mercury symbol. The marks you mistook for horns are a stylized version of the wings and staff of Hermes. Wings and a staff? Huh. So then, she beats you with the staff until you die and go to heaven. Sounds like Lotus, all right. <laughs> okay. Seven shook Junpei's head even more vigorously, and the younger man began to feel as though his brain was being jostled about inside of his skull. Seven! Oh, that's too much! Oh, my head! Junpei's stomach began churning uncomfortably. 
Oh, I think I'm gonna puke. Unless we can activate this device, I doubt the elevator will function. In other words, we gotta find a key card with a mercury symbol on it. So I would assume. Let's forget the elevators for right now. How about that hallway to the left? Whoa, there's a bunch of doors. There were a great many doors lining both sides of the hallway. They seemed to stretch on forever, and all three men suddenly felt very small. Ah, shit. We're not gonna have enough time to check all these, are we? Maybe we can come back here later. We should check out the other side. Let's head back. To the right of the stairs, another hallway stretched out, reaching deep into the bowels of the ship. To the right this time! After a few moments of moving briskly down the hallway, they emerged into an area roughly the same size and shape as the one at the top of the stairs. On the left side of the room were four French doors. Uh, there are doors here too. Uh, well, I guess it's just four this time. Let's open them up, starting with the closest one there. Okay, I'm on it. Junpei nodded and grabbed the one closest to him. He gave it a small tug and felt it move. Huh, it isn't locked. I'm going to open it. Thrilled to have found another unlocked door, he threw it open. <laughs> Junpei didn't know what to make of what he saw. What? Oops. Wait, can I skip? Cause this is- this part's not- He simply stood, unable to speak. Nope. <laughs> Seven's eyes opened wide and his mouth gaped. After a few long moments, Seven at last managed to speak. Hey, what- What is this place? I guess I am with different people who will probably naturally react differently. <laughs> it's so huge. And empty. Maybe soon. Maybe soon, indeed. A massive room stretched out in front of them. More a cavern than a room. Its vastness was oppressive, and it bore down on Seven and Junpei. It was not empty, however. The entire room was filled with lines upon lines of beds. They were simple things. Little more than pipe and thin mattresses. Oh, there are beds everywhere. Is this a hospital? The harsh scent in the air is reminiscent of antiseptic solution. I think so. There are shelves in the center of the room with medicine and surgical tools. Hey, look there. The four doors at the end. Three of them were emblazoned with large single-digit numbers and made with thick red paint. The left door says three. The second door is blank, but the third has a seven. And the rightmost door is eight. There's no doubt. They're numbered doors. Hey, why is that door between three and seven blank? Does that mean anything? No point worrying about it right now. Let's see if these will open first. Yeah, good idea. The three of them threaded their way through the beds toward the back of the room. Upon reaching them, they proceed to investigate each door in turn, but to no avail. <sighs> yep, locked. Just like I thought. Naturally. After all, there are rules to the nonary game, and to allow these doors to open easily would violate those rules. Unless we can authenticate ourselves with the red, the numbered doors will... Whoa, whoa, check this out. Suddenly, Seven spoke up, interrupting Snake. Look at the red. There's nothing on it. Huh? Don't you remember the red back at the main staircase? If there wasn't anyone in it, it said vacant on the little screen, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But this one... There's nothing. Right? You think it's broken? Only one way to find out. No, nothing. 
Junpei and the others put their hands on the panel, but nothing happened. The red refused to change. They aren't pulling the lever, and s or they tried, rather, pulling the lever, and, and still nothing. Well, I don't know why I said they weren't pulling the lever. <laughs> That's odd. As they soon discovered, it wasn't only the red on the door on door 8 that seems to be malfunctioning. How about the red on door 7? And door 3? We got out of the casino room, and we are now in the big hospital room, but we haven't rendezvoused with everyone else. I didn't think all of them would be malfunctioning. <gasps> Pancake dinner! What does it mean? They've got to be broken. Man, that bastard. I didn't think Zero was the kind of guy who'd screw around with something like this. Whoa, whoa, Zero's been prepared for everything so far, and you're saying he's gonna make a mistake now? Well, that's the only thing I can think of. This thing ain't working at all. Hmm. While Junpei and Seven talked, Snake busied himself with examining the red. After a time, he lowered his hands and spoke. It seems as if some of the internal hardware has been removed. Internal hardware? That is what I said. Take a look at the underside of this red, if you please. The bottom? Junpei obliged and bent over to look at the underside of the device. Huh, there's a thin slot here. I think it's a slot for something. Uh, probably electronic. The other two reds are the same. Something's been removed from all three of them. I get it. So the reds aren't working because somebody pulled out their guts. So I assume. But why? And who? Oops, sorry. I mean, it really doesn't make sense. <laughs> but why? I have no idea. Why on earth would I know something like that? Just then, they heard the sound of a door opening. Oh, uh, what now? The three of them turned and saw... Akane! Oh, no, Junpei thought, it's... June! She stopped short, surprised to see them, and was very nearly bowled over by the rest of her companions, who were coming through the door behind her. Ace, hey, everybody! Santa, Clover, and, and Lotus! Small June. <laughs> Guess everyone's here. Junpei and Seven were, for the moment, at a loss for words. What are you guys doing? Why are you... That's my line? Perhaps we should exchange information. Not yet. After a moment of silence and surprise, everyone suddenly began to talk, desperate to exchange information. They talked about the rooms they'd been through and how they ended up in the same place. Of course, none of it was very useful information, but that hardly mattered. They were happy to simply see one another again. Although the level of cheer varied greatly from person to person, each one of them was wearing some manner of smile. Almost as though they had already forgotten the death of the Ninth Man. No, thought Junpei, perhaps that wasn't it. Why can't I skip this yet? Maybe because it hasn't quite converged. Yeah, it hasn't quite converged yet. Perhaps thoughts of his death were what drove them to smile at one another. Not in a morbid or hateful way, no. The Ninth Man had died. But they were still alive, and that was something to be happy about. A sort of simple, uncomplicated joy, Junpei thought. The joy of being alive. Still alive. He felt sorry for the Ninth Man. More than anything, Junpei was just happy to be alive. And that's what we know. Man, it takes a while. With that, Junpei finished his own explanation. Well, this isn't good. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. What about that big hallway? Maybe there's somewhere in there we might be able to go. No, there's nothing there. The five of us had a quick look. There are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. You mean all those doors are for hospital rooms? Yes. There are a number of individual rooms in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. It had one of those solar system mark things on it. It was the Jupiter symbol. Jupiter. I wonder what it means. 
Confusion seemed to be the consensus. While we're asking what things mean, uh, what's the deal with this room? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. No one, not even Snake, appeared ready to offer an answer, until Seven unexpectedly spoke up. Well, I figure it's probably a hospital ship. Chances are it's the Gigantic. The Gigantic? <laughs> but it was Locke's socks. <laughs> Junpei looked at Seven, shocked by both his knowledge and the apparent identity of their prison. He was not the only one. What is this Gigantic? Seven nodded to Lotus and began to speak. The Gigantic. She was a sister ship to the Titanic, built in the early 20th century. Oh, goodness. Actually, the Titanic had two sister ships, and they looked exactly the same. The Gigantic was said to be one of them. They intended to make her a passenger liner like the Titanic, but World War I began soon after the ship launched. The British Navy took her over and made her a hospital ship. At some point during the war, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in the Aegean Sea. She ran aground afterwards, so she didn't end up sunk. What happened to her after that? One theory going around is that a man named Lord Gordain bought her. Seemed like he'd been one of the few to survive the Titanic sinking. That trauma turned him into some kind of obsessive collector of all things related to the Titanic. Soon enough, the guy wanted the Titanic itself. Which was impossible, of course. It's stuck at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. But the Gigantic wasn't. And seeing as she was identical... So you're saying this Lord Gordain bought this ship? Yeah, at least I think I am. That's impossible. No way we're in some boat that's almost a hundred years old. Pipe down, just pay attention. What, that's it? Well, have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the Gigantic. Well, this ship's got stuff that's like the Titanic and a hospital ship. So, I just figured... Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that's your only reason. No, I I've got more. Like? Well, uh, I mean... Seven looked around desperately, doing anything to avoid meeting Lotus's piercing stare. He scratched his head for a moment, then gave up. Finally, he opened his mouth. I don't know. Lotus sighed and shook her head. <sighs> I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah, sorry about that. Then, almost as if to save Seven from further embarrassment... A bell began to ring from far away. Huh. A bell. It sounds like the clock in the main stairway. Junpei counted each chime carefully. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Huh. Twelve. It's midnight. You are gonna mar your way. Then we've still got six hours left, right? Let's get going. We gotta find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. They had been examining the room as they talked. But we haven't found anything. Right. That only leaves one place to look. One? Uh, well, not just one. Uh-huh. Wait. Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of the other rooms. Well, you already checked some of them out before you came here, right? We each checked a single room, so five rooms in total. All right, then. That's five rooms we don't have to search. <sighs> we just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. If each of us can do six rooms apiece, we'll have the other 48 rooms cleared in no time. Uh, I don't think so. There are 48 so. other rooms? Lotus did not seem excited by the prospect. Seven fidgeted nervously before responding. Uh, just... Maybe? Huh. After some discussion, the eight of them decided which rooms to begin with and in what order they would go. I suppose checking the flow would be the fastest way to do that. Jupiter was chosen to search rooms on the starboard side, moving floor to aft. Alright, so everyone knows which area they're searching? Yeah. Yes! Yeah. They also determined when they return to the next... We'll all meet up when the clock goes off again. Ah, uh, how about in that room with all the beds? Yeah, sounds straightforward enough. 
If during their search that any of them were to locate the missing components, they were to yell for the others. I'll shout if I find any of the components we need. I hope we can find them within the time limit. If the strategy failed, they'd return to discuss their options later. If we can't, then we'll just have to come up with another plan. Right. Then let's do this. Okay, yeah, this is probably the next one. Yep. We are back in familiar territory, so I'll use this opportunity to eat. What we learn. The components are back, but Snake is missing. Lotus offers us form a team because we'll be able to go through the nine door if we take seven. But we didn't like that. We want to talk to Clover. She screams at us to leave her alone. <laughs> so we're like, all right, we'll give her her space. <laughs> we go down the hallway. We talk to Ace. He's like, don't you think it's weird? Are Snake and Clover really siblings? And Ace is like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and we go, they don't look anything alike. And he's like, oh, now that you mention it, I suppose they don't. And we're like, what? <laughs> We go to the hospital room and we talk to Santa. And he's bothered by the red. And we chose zero last time, but he doesn't think so. So I guess we'll say someone on the room. Maybe there's someone else on this ship with us. You mean someone hiding here? Yeah, well, well I mean, it's just an idea. <laughs> and you're saying this mystery person fixed the reds? Yeah. Why? That's, um... I don't know. Santa shoved his hands into his pockets and cracked his knuckles. Seems unlikely. Why? I don't know. Just a feeling. Hard to believe Zero would bring in a secret tenth player. I mean, the name of the game is the Nonary game, for Christ's sake. You know what Nonary means, right? It means nine. No, that's not what I meant. I mean more like someone who's been living here for a long time. Or someone who, like, stayed here. Seriously? That's even more ridiculous. Why do you think Zero would leave them alone? Junpei furrowed his brow. So, in other words, one of us is the person <laughs> who fixed <laughs> the red. <laughs> Santa Bingo! Red. We have a But if that's true, then the person who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know that they fixed it. Okay, back to skipping. I forgot that choosing different answers <laughs> stops the skip. We're like, who should go through doors? We can't all go. She says we gotta... We can't, um... We can't all go through the doors, so at least one person has to be left behind. They do a vote. 
Lotus kind of says shit to Clover, which feels super scummy. And then Ace is like, I will stay behind. And then shoots himself up with Soap Earl Beta. <laughs> so that way they can't force him through a door. And he goes to sleep. <laughs> okay, last time we said door three, never mind. Um, I think because it's separated based on the character. Seven wants to go through door seven, and Lotus wants to go through door eight. So we went through door seven last time. Which means our options are three or eight. And just to be sure, I choose if I choose three again, and they're like, no, you can't do that. The choice pops up again. Yeah. Door 8 is next. So we'll go through door 8. Okay, okay. Fine. Alright. I choose door 8. Okay. 8 it is. Yeah. Alright then. That means June's gotta go through 7. Huh? Why? June's face was blank and confused. You wanted 7, though? Santa muttered to himself and turned to Junpei. <laughs> Ugh, Junpei, you figured it out, right? Can you explain it to her? Okay, so, June, if we want all six of us to go through a door... Junpei chose his words carefully. When Junpei finally finished, June looked as though she was about to cry. Oh no! We know where that ending goes. Who knows what horrors await behind door eight. To be fair, there's another set of doors... after... <laughs> these <laughs> and I accidentally beelined for the knife ending because I was trying to get something else <laughs> but if we do this we might run into a, d a different ending depending <laughs> you're saying we aren't gonna see each other again for a long time uh. Junpei felt as June did he wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face but he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, sealed his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never gonna see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was seven that interjected. I'm sure they're gonna connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't, then neither team can get through door nine. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. So how was the Nintendo Direct? Uh, a couple of things were announced. Uh, I know there was DLC for the Xenoblade Chronicles games. I don't remember which one, probably the newer one. Um, some new games were released. I think uh, it's a Spike Chunsoft game where... You're a detective, and I think it's like the same creator for Dog and Rompa, so it's in that style. It's basically what I, the Somnium Files, is to Zero Escape that that game will be to Dog and Rompa. It's it's 
spearheaded in the same sense of it being its own series. But it's actually made by the director, not someone who worked on Danganronpa, like the case for, uh, Zonky Zero. So not as good, then. <laughs> hey, man, I like I, the Somnium Files. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand. He's not gonna end this game until we get through the nine door. But yeah, it's another Spike Chunsoft game that's made by the director for. Oh, uh, what systems are the Danganronpa games on? Uh, originally? Weren't they all handheld? But, uh, Danganronpa 1, 2, Reload and V3 are on the PS4. Yeah. V to PC, PS4, and Switch. Hello. Hush Puppy? Okay. Yeah, 1 and 2 were PSP originally. And then they did 1, 2, Reload for the PS4. There's also... Um, Danganronpa, another episode, or Ultimate Despair, what is it called? Ultra Despair Girls? That's kind of like a spin-off-ish subplot to the mainline Danganronpa games. And while I don't think it's necessary to understand anything that goes on in the three games, it, just like Danganronpa 3, the end of Hope's Peak High School, V3 references and draws upon its existence and acknowledges that it was a thing that happened. Yeah, Vita Digital got delisted because, um... Because it was originally distributed by NIS America, and they lost the rights to distribute it. Um... And as far as I'm aware, I don't think Spike Chunsoft has redistributed it in any format. Uh, physically. That is what was told. <laughs> That's now gone if you didn't get it already. Shit. That sucks. But yeah, all, all of that nonsense was just because NIS America, um lost the rights, and Spike Chunsoft requested that they not renew it because they wanted to distribute their own games. So, um, they didn't let NISA, um, purchase it again. Which, fair, if you can distribute your own games, fair, but I feel like the first step is redistributing what NIS America has to legally take down so that way you don't, like, screw a bunch of people up uh, over it, but nope. <laughs> June said nothing. Hmm. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna see each other again. I promise. Though I'm pretty sure you can still buy them digitally on PC and on PS4. It's not by uh, NISA. Like, I have 1-2 Reload, and that's that's the NISA distributed distribution of the game uh, for 1 and 2. But now I think it's it's handled by, by Spike Chunsoft. June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. 
Yeah, they just chose not to for Vita because it's legacy. Which sucks, but it happens. <sighs> you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Am I already on the... no. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take seven and Clover can take eight. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. All right, we're ready to go then. Let's move. At Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Santa, Seven, and June walked toward door seven, while Clover, Lotus, and Junpei headed for door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Then Lotus laid her hand against her chest and turned to Junpei and Clover. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Then shall we go? It's open. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Okay. Hurry! Lotus and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators in the bracelets had been activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. <sighs> he looked to his left, toward door seven. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. June. Jumpy. They nodded. Their farewell took almost 1.5 seconds. What the hell are you doing? Then someone took hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him bodily through the door. He heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. What was the most fucked up story slash short story you had to read in school? Hmm. That's... The lottery, maybe? No, not... Well, that one was pretty fucked. There's no question about it. Um... And we read it because it was topical because the Hunger Games was popular. Um, yeah, the lottery was pretty bad. I don't remember the name of this one, but it's about... Yeah, the most dangerous game, right? That's the one where the guy gets stranded on an island and the dude's like, Welcome to my mansion! Look at all my trophies! I'm an amazing hunter, but I've... But I've always wanted to hunt the ultimate creature, which is human. And he's like, meh. <laughs> that one's weird. That one's really weird. Yeah. And then, um... Anything from Edgar Allan Poe, honestly, is just messed up. But it's hard to understand because of the way he writes sometimes. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. 81 seconds left. Hurry! Lotus snapped at him and then ran to the dead. Ugh. Junpei and Clover followed her as fast as they could. It stopped. With a shaking hand, she wiped a few beads of sweet sweat from her forehead. From sweet. <laughs> she, she rubbed a few be beads of sweet. Clover, however, was calm. Aloof, perhaps. Pointless. <laughs> I 
She muttered to herself without emotion and began to walk down the hallway, leaving behind a confused Junpei and Lotus. Lotus watched the girls proceeding or er, receding back with a mix of frustration and curiosity. <laughs> what an unpleasant girl. I bet she's not very popular with the boys. Her sarcasm seemed a little more biting than was perhaps necessary, but she sighed and started after the younger girl. Yeah, I read 1984. I read Animal Farm as well. That one was easier to get through for me than 1984. But in some points, it, at some points it was kind of just like... <clears throat> I read The Jungle, and I fucking hated it. <laughs> Not because I had to, I just chose to, and I regretted it. <laughs> well, I had to read something for a school re Accelerated reading, it had the most points. So I ended up reading The Jungle, and that was awful. I understand the history of needing to understand those people who wrote promoting socialism because it was in direct response to cruelties during work. Like, I understand where they're coming from, but man, I don't want to read it. <laughs> it's not, like, happy. It's not pleasant. It's not written in an interesting way. Like, you can read things that are not pleasant. <laughs> and if it's just written in a way that grips the reader well enough or is interesting. <laughs> but those sweat AR points. <laughs> it was just, ugh. You get to those last five chapters and you're like, Jesus fucking Christ. Because that's when it stops being a book and it starts being a socialism propaganda uh, telegram, but it's five chapters long. <sighs> and it's just like, oh, kill me. <laughs> or just p t finish the book so I can t put it on the shelf at my school library and never touch it again. <laughs> mm, maybe pairing these two together was a mistake. Like, the you could tell the writer was like, okay, I don't want the book to just, like, only be stuff about it. Like, the thing with The Jungle is it's a very informative and interesting book discussing how the meat market and other jobs at the time, like, functioned the way civilization was like. Things like the state of just lack of safety, cleanliness, of anything surrounding Chicago during that time it's like yeah that's that i thought i thought was an interesting read and then it was just like how was he able to do enough like world building for this historical fiction and then just throw it all out the window <laughs> you want to know how he learned how he managed to do that somehow he stopped talking about anything <laughs> only socialism also a series of unfortunate events <laughs> just <laughs> uh it's i don't think it's exactly at chapter 30 but the first time the main character gets arrested that's when it starts to drag like, hard. Oh yeah, reading the Forbidden- I just skipped that. I didn't read the- I didn't read him reading the book. I, mostly because my copy shrank the print slightly to indicate that he was reading a book. And I was like, I can't read this. My eyes don't like reading the tiny font. I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> so about like halfway through that part, I was just like, whoop. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Did I cheat? Yes. Do I care? No. <laughs> Too late now. I better catch up to them. After taking a moment to catch his breath, Junpei followed. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a dead end. The hallway made a number of turns before coming to a dead end. I didn't read that for school. Well, I did, but I, again, read it for AR. And you know what? The quiz to see if I read the book didn't ask any questions about that segment, so I was right to skip it. <laughs> like, it can only ask you 10 to 20 questions about the book, but I think there were like 17 for that one. Not a single one had any questions about anything in that segment. <laughs> so I was like, okay, the, the quiz makers didn't read that part either, I guess. <laughs> There's a door on the left, though. Uh, for a few minutes, they stood in front of the door, examining it. Above the door was a plate with the word laboratory engraved on it. A laboratory? Huh. Oh, that doesn't sound very pleasant. I don't like the look of this place. Me either, but there aren't any other doors. It's not like we have a lot of choices. Junpei. Huh? Please. You first. Junpei suspect suspected her politeness was motivated by something other than respect. <laughs> Ugh, fine. Junpei muttered to himself and pushed open the iron door. His first steps inside were, the te were tentative and careful, but as he examined the room, it became clear that there was no imminent danger. Lotus followed him in, and Clover brought up the rear. The room they found themselves in was divided into two separate areas by a curved wall. wall. A thick glass window built into that wall made it possible to see into the other side of the division. You know, I think the window looks into another room. Maybe it's for monitoring something. Junpei walked to the window and looked through. What the hell? He wasn't sure what else to say. In the center of, the, of a room shaped like a quarter circle, a mannequin lay on what looked like a medical exam table. <sighs> looks so creepy. Junpei jumped a little. He hadn't noticed Lotus come up next to him. It's kind of like that doll is waiting for surgery. This is a laboratory, right? I'd say it's more like it's waiting to be experimented on. Ooh, huh. It's creepy either way. You think the lottery was the first what a twist story you read as a kid? She's gonna say it. Lotus is gonna say something in this room. You don't think that thing's gonna suddenly sit up or something, do you? <laughs> if I find it. Well, I don't know. I mean, look at all those cables sticking out of it. If we press the wrong button, I don't know. <sighs> Stop it. Just thinking about it is terrifying. She was gripping her arms. Knuckles on her hands, white. I better find it, okay. Wait, where's Clover? She was still standing near the entrance of the room. <laughs> Her face had the appearance of calm, but it was drawn and somehow sad. What is she? Did I read Flowers for Algernon? Yes, I did read that one. I also read... Uh, I read the play version of it, unless it was originally a play, in which then I read that. And it doesn't matter what form I read it in. Um, <laughs> I also read Death of a Salesman. That one is upsetting for a number of different reasons. <laughs> there was something almost pitiful about her. 
Junpei walked over to her and, as kindly as he could, spoke. It's... It's pretty sad. A lot of characters in that do things in a way that you like. don't agree with, but you also understand where they're coming from. It was, it was written in a way that was very, like, the characters are very, very human. Like, it's, it's a weird way of, like, describing it, but I, it's just kind of like, characters make bad choices in it, and they, while I don't feel like those characters should be forgiven for their actions, the actions that other characters in response to those actions take doesn't make them any better. In, in some angles, you could even say it makes them worse. But ultimately... The message is just, again, it's it's kind of a, it's once again the, the system of, like, times changing, and if you're not able to keep up with it, and stay on top of it, you get... You get left behind. That a lot of... A lot of what shapes the characters at the start, like, it, it starts really well because it's like, you don't really understand where the protagonist is coming from in his behavior towards his father, but then there's like a flashback that's happening at the same time as the, as the character is confronting his father. And it just... The back and forth is you realize why the main character is the way he is and why he treats his father the way he does, despite his father clearly having, like, a form of sensory overload. Like, it's interesting because it's like, you can't really tell in that scene whether or not the flashback is being experienced by the main character or if it's what the father is thinking while his son is talking to him. Or perhaps they're both thinking it. I never read The Scarlet Letter, and I haven't read The Great Gatsby. I, ho I own a copy of the book, and I should probably read it just to say that I have, but it doesn't sound like it's particularly interesting. <laughs> are you okay? Clover looked away. What are you talking about? What? I I'm just worried about you. You've been real quiet. What? I can't be quiet if I want to? Well, I mean, of course you can. I, I just... Okay, then. If I can be quiet if I want, just leave me alone, okay? Come on, you know I can't do that. We gotta work together. Junpei, you just don't get it! Oh, she didn't let me read. Culver bit her lip and was silent for a moment. Then suddenly... Ow, so suddenly I didn't even read that first part. Her cry took Junpei by surprise, and he stumbled backwards a few steps, alarmed. My brother's not the kind of person who just leave me behind! Something happened to him! Something... something bad. Yeah. Junpei had nothing to say. Lotus, jolted from her mannequin nightmares by Clover... By Clover's voice, turned toward them. What happened? Clover's eyes slid to Lotus, then back to Junpei. Look, just don't bother me, okay? Leave me alone. Finished, she turned around. Before Junpei or Lotus could say anything, Clover had begun to walk quickly away. Hey, wait, Clover! Hold on! That way is... I told you to leave me alone! He might as well have been talking to a wall for all the notice she took of his cries. Not even slowing down, she made it for a she made for a doorway cut in the wall in front of her. 
Without even slowing down, she passed through the doorway. Clover, watch out above you! And without warning, an iron gate fell from the ceiling like a port portcullis sealing Clover in. What the heck? What's going on here? Clover grabbed hold of the iron bars and shook them as hard as she could. Hang on. I I'll get it open. Oh, for crying out. You'll never do it on your own. Junpei grabbed the bars and pulled. In a moment, Lotus joined him. The three of them pulled as hard as they could, but... <laughs> Damn it! It's not moving. Wait! Are you gonna give up? Just like that? No, I'm not giving up. This has got to be another one of Zero's puzzles. If it is, then there's got to be a way to open it. Junpei nodded. Just what I was thinking. Now all we got to do is find it. Lotus and I can look around out here. Clover, you're going to have to see if you can find anything in there. Oh, yes, I'm on it. Another room. What is in my Discord? Ah, oh, yes. Pikmin 4, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Pass 4, Sambo de Amigo Party Central, Fashion Dreamer, Dead Cells Return to Castlevania, Tron Identity, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, which I believe is the... No, it's DECA Police, isn't it? If I pull this up, will it be that? This is definitely it. Deca police De <laughs> Deca police is dog and robot in 3D but detective. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Deca police Bayonetta Origins, Splatoon 3 Pass, Disney Illusion Island, Fire Emblem Engage Pass 2, Harmony The Fall of Reverly, Octopath Traveler 2, We Love Katakari, Sea of Stars, Omega Strikers. Etrian Odyssey Origins Collection. That sounds interesting. Advanced Wars 1-2 Reboot Camp. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Game Boy slash Advanced Games Online. Metroid Prime Remastered. Master Detective Archives Rain Code. Baten Kaito's 1 and 2 HD. Fantasy Life The Girl Who Steals Time. So Fantasy Life 2. Professor Layton and the New World of Steam. <laughs> oh goodness. Mario Kart 8 DLC 4. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, and CE. I don't know what that means, but those are the games. Anyway, back to puzzles. Ooh. Junpei! Do something, please! Quick! Figure out how I'm gonna get out of here! A silver handrail. It looks like a regular handrail. Window made of really thick glass. It doesn't matter what I hit it with, it might as well be made of steel. This looks like the control for some kind of electric lock. The red light is on. Then it's gotta be locked. There's a green light just below it. Although that one isn't lit. I bet it'll turn on if we can unlock it, right? Yes, but how are we going to unlock it? There's no keyhole, no card reader, and no keyboard for putting in a password. <laughs> hmm. I have no idea. It looks like this door is the exit. And the door on the right just goes to the laboratory. Nope, oh, this door isn't going anywhere. No dice. It won't open. I mean, that's about as much as I expected. I don't think Zero would let us out of the room quite that easily. Everything suggests the store is the exit. The only problem is figuring out how it opens. Hey, Clover! There's a door over here, too! Catcher in the rye. 
wait! I'll be right there! I can hear her over there. Is this door gonna... Damn it! Can't open it! Clover, what about your side? It won't work! I can't even move the knob! This looks like the control for an electric door lock. There's a red light on the display. That means it's locked. If we can get that light to turn green, then maybe we can get Clover back. I wonder what this is. This thing here looks like a vault meter. And this is the control for that... Gosh, there's so many dials. Why don't you try turning one of them? Um... Nope. Nothing. There's no power here, guys. I turn the dial a whole bunch, but... Even if I turn all the switches on, nothing happens. I wonder what they washed here. There are these weird colored stains all over the sink. Is there anything unusual on that machine? Well, hmm. I don't know, you know? There are a bunch of cords hanging from the bottom of it. I don't know, man. I don't feel like I really enjoyed any of my required reading. Uh, well, no, that's a lie. I liked Frankenstein. Because it was actually done in an interesting way. Sort of. We still had to read together, but we read at our own pace together. As in, like, this, the, the objective was sit in the room and read. <laughs> so that way the teacher could confirm that you read. At least. But you didn't have to sit there waiting for somebody to read the section out loud. And then you had work to do after you read it. So, if people read faster than others, they would just close their book, or if they have trouble, like, with retention in terms of reading things, and even then, you would probably still refer to the book while filling out the assigned stuff. And if you didn't finish it in class, then that was your homework. That was, like, the best way to do it, I think. Because the the problem with, like, telling them to read it at home is a lot of people won't. Which, that was... This, the way that I did it for Frank... No, I was told to do it for Frankenstein was better than any other one could have done it. I hate the ones where you have to read and they pass it off to each other based on paragraph because people's reading speeds are different and it makes reading a book like pulling teeth... Although the worst one by far was we sit in the room and listen to an audiobook. Because you couldn't read at your own pace with the audiobook. You had to follow the pace of the person reading it on the audiobook. Which, at that point, why are we even trying to read it? <laughs> Just make us watch a movie about the book. Like, people like audiobooks. It's fine in theory, but I don't know. How many people buy an audiobook to read mentally with somebody reading out loud in audiobook form? How many people actually do that? Because I'm not one of those people. I cannot, I cannot physically keep pace with the audiobook person. Exactly. I just slept, and then I read the book at home. Because I, I, even if I had tried to stay awake, there's no way in hell I was going to actually end up reading it. my brain would keep me from being able to read it, because I'd wind up ahead of the audiobook person, or I'd just zone out, stop turning the pages, and then eventually fall asleep. Amazon has a whispering sync? Well, that's cool. 
But yeah, forcing it on class widespread, especially if it's not in headphone format. This isn't just here, everyone have the, the school provided headphones to listen to. It was on speaker. And it's just like, okay, epic. <laughs> I hated it. It was not a good solution. Throw that method of group reading in the trash. There are a bunch of cords hanging from the bottom of it. Jeez, this is a lot of cords. It looks like they all go over into the mannequin's head. So the device and the mannequin are connected. What the hell were they doing in here? Oh man, back when this laboratory was active, that wasn't a mannequin in there, I bet. There was a real live human on their ta on that table. I wonder what. No, I don't want to think about that. I think this thing is a monitor for whatever experiment they were running in here. I think this thing is a monitor for whatever experiment they were. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on here like resistance value and voltage. I thought that the thing was a new thing. Power is off. So there's nothing on it right now. This is a monitor. There's a whole lot of cables under the table. I don't know what kind of table this is, but part of it's all black. There's a pen lying over here. I think someone probably used it to make the table black. Hmm, well, if they only used the pen on one part of it, there's probably something underneath all that pen. Clover, do you think you can erase it? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is a permanent marker. Junpei, do you know how to erase ink from a permanent marker? Erase ink from a permanent marker, huh? Uh, give me just a minute, Clover. I'll be right back. It's a rack. And there are a bunch of cables on it. Somebody cut the outer stuff off of the cables. I can see the wires inside. Hmm. It's a rack, there are some cubits on top with copper wire exposed. Okay, I don't think I need to mess with anything. Those are the stairs I just came down. And the bars and the gate are just above me. Is this like an examination table? There's a creepy mannequin in here, guys. Aware. There's a, something sticking out of the mannequin's head, like wires or something. What the hell were they doing in there? Huh? Why is she all quiet now? They we're doing experiments on humans. Probably. Oh man, now she looks sad. Hmm? There's a mannequin lying on the exam table. I can't really see it very well from here, but it looks like there are a bunch of electrodes sticking out of its head. And there's a lot of stuff here. I don't know how we could use any of these. Catch-22 is a good one, I've heard. I liked Frankenstein. I have not read Through the Looking Glass. I've read parts of Don Quixote in Spanish for Spanish class. So I should probably uh, try reading that. Um, Slaughterhouse-Five, I read a section of. I thought it was pretty good. Um, Count of Monte Cristo, I read that so long ago. But I remember enjoying it. Hmm. Well, I can say for sure that I do know how to use at least one of these things. Granted, I think I had a heavily edited version because I read it in fourth grade. And it was a type of, it was, you know, those types of books where they like edit out some of the really bad parts to make it slightly more kid friendly. Like I've definitely, I definitely understand and could explain the overall plot, but I know there are details that were removed.
Mostly because I know that the book that I read was about half the length looking at it from, like, the side of the actual book. <laughs> so I should probably reread it. But, like, the actual one that's for not children. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I can say for sure that I do know how to use at least one of these things. Which one? The one on the top. I think it's a power cable. A power cable, huh? I'll take that. This is definitely a power cable. Do you remember if we ran into anything that didn't have power? Oh. I think this thing's supposed to power that machine in the other room. I've read Treasure Island. <laughs> I've also watched Muppets Treasure Island. <laughs> I have also watched Treasure Planet. The Disney one. Not the other one. <laughs> It doesn't seem to- it doesn't appear to be doing that. I wonder how we're supposed to turn it on. And this is a really old type of keyboard. This keyboard is pretty old-fashioned. Is this a keyhole? I liked it! This looks like a keyhole for the activation key. Hmm. There are two levers here. Do you think they activate something? Well, why don't you move one? Alright, I'll give it a try. Nope. Doesn't look like anything's happened. This is for antisepsis. Well, it says anhydrous ethanol. Anhydrous? Is that different from regular ethanol? Yeah. Mm. It's a powerful cleaner. It can even erase the marks left by a permanent marker. Did you know that ethanol is used in some alcoholic drinks? To kill a mockingbird? I never read that one. So, does that mean you can use booze to clean up marker graffiti? Well, I don't know about that. I'd rather drink it than use it to clean. Uh, don't drink that. I'm not gonna drink it. Bottle of anhydrous ethanol. Apparently you can erase the marks of a permanent marker. Oh. Well, I guess that's all there is. Really? They're cardboard boxes. There's some papers and stuff in them. What's in the boxes? They look quite full. Meh, bah, shit. As far as I know, it might be for experiments, but it's all really technical and stuff. I don't really get it. And these lockers are a little larger than the ones on top. Let's see if there's anything useful in here. And, no, nothing. I don't want to accidentally give her the ethanol. The mouse. The keyboard. This is the computer. There might be a reason for that. The power isn't on. Well, there is a power button. And this is a waste of time. What? I don't see a power cable. Oops. Yeah, you're right. No power cable. This thing isn't even connected to a main computer, though. It's got a monitor, keyboard, mouse, but that's it. It's just sticking the power cable- Just sticking the power cable in isn't gonna do anything. It got too- It took me long establishing Lincoln's childhood. 
Well, the only thing you need to know about that movie is that every actor but the one for Abraham Lincoln is actually good at their job. Abraham Lincoln in that movie is not, his actor is not very good. <laughs> very bad actor. <laughs> but, like, as in, like, didn't know what he was doing. Didn't feel, you know, like he was acting. He just, he was pretty stiff. Um, but the others were actually good characters, and they were cast well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. And Junpei, can we get back to what we were talking about, please? This computer doesn't have a power cable. No, nope, sure doesn't. And? Don't say and. It's rude. Have you already forgotten what you just picked up? What I just picked up? <laughs> power cable, huh? Culver, use this ethanol. You should be able to wipe off that permanent ink with it. What am I gonna wipe with? Oh, well, your clothes, of course. Ha ha ha! Kidding! Just kidding! Hee 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 hee. <laughs> the part where they intersect would be that it has the name World War C. <laughs> Please don't look at me like that, you're scaring me. Anyway, could you wipe off that permanent ink? Look, Clover, right now at this moment, you're the only person we can depend on. I'm trusting you with this. <laughs> Do you trust me? I feel kind of special. I have to get Clover out of here now! Clover, can you use the cloth on the table? Use... huh? Soak it in ethanol and then use it to wash off all the stuff from the permanent marker, okay? Right, okay. So I gotta soak the cloth with ethanol. I haven't seen either, so... Well, she's got the cloth, but she seems to be having a little trouble with the bottle of ethanol. When she's ready, I should ask her to get to work on that stuff on the table. So the cloth and ethanol and... Junpei! It's working! It's wiping the permanent ink off! Huh? There's some kind of weird drawing under all the permanent ink. What's the deal with that drawing we found? Maybe I should ask her to take another look at the table. I wonder what this is. There are a bunch of numbers in some kind of grid. Can't see it from here. Clover, you've got a pen and a notebook, right? Could you write those numbers down and then hand them to me through the bars? Okay. Okay, Roger. Oh my goodness. What itches? Ah. Uh... Got it. Here, Junpei. I wrote down all the numbers from the desk on here. Oh, it's a file! Three, four, two, one. Lights, huh? Well, can't hurt to give these babies a try. Yep, just as I thought. Locked up tight. All nine of them. I wonder if there's anything important in there. Monitors have a power cable, so one end of this cable needs to be connected to a monitor, and the other end needs to plug in under the desk. I did not know that. All right, let's just slip you in, huh? Well, shoot, I can't use this. What's wrong? This cable has three prongs, but the socket only has two holes. 
It's not gonna fit, is what I'm saying. In other words, we're gonna need a plug to change the power cable to one with two prongs. That's right. Hmm. The hands on the clock have stopped moving. The clock may stop, but time goes on. No time to screw around. We need to figure out a way out of here. Clover, how are the power cables over there? Huh? What do you mean? Does the plug have three prongs or two? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me go look. Guess she does have to kind of crouch down to get a look under there. That cable on the monitor has, a. Uh... It's got two of those little metal things. What does that mean? That's it. Okay, can you unplug that cable and bring it over here? Uh, okay, but... But? Well, I can unplug it, but it's connected to the main computer. I can't take it over to you. Damn it, that's no good... Good, then. Well, how about just the plug? What? The plug? Well, maybe more like a... Um, connector? It's a sort of thing that makes the plug with the three metal thingies into a plug with two metal thingies. Still useless? Not useless! Not useless at all! That's just what we were looking for. Okay, can you hold on for a little bit? And back down she goes. Alright. Unplugged. I'll hand it to you over at the bars, okay? Here you go. The two-prong plug. Thanks. And this is the two-pronged plug that we can use to convert the power cable from a three-pronged cable to a two-pronged one. Yep, and we're gonna do that right now. Okay, put the two-pronged plug onto the head of this power cable. Amazing. It fits perfectly. And this should be just what we need. Oh. Thank you, Clover. Aw. Alright, I've got the two-pronged power cable in my hand. I'm pretty sure this will work. Under the desk I go, and let's just plug this thing into the monitor. Alright, that ought to do it. Alright, let's turn the power on. Uh, I don't think anything's gonna happen. Why not? Well, it's not connected to the main computer. You never know until you try. Pretty optimistic. Junpei pushed the button on the front of the monitor. Oh, that worked! With a soft hum, it turned on. Streams of letters that made no sense to Junpei began to scroll across the screen. What? He had hoped it would turn on, but he hadn't expected this. Huh? It's running on its own? It certainly looks like it. Uh, isn't that kinda... weird? What? Well, it's not connected to the main computer, right? There's just this keyboard and monitor. The only cable connected to this thing is the power cable we just plugged in. So, why is it working? Maybe it's a wireless display. Clearly, this was a reasonable explanation at Lotus. Uh, a wireless display? Yes, it connects to your computer wirelessly, hence the name. Have you been living in a cave, Junpei? He most certainly had not, but... Is that normal? Yes, at least where I worked. Oh. She said it. Uh, have you been living in a cave? Oh, it stopped. Pass with a colon. Looks like we need to enter a password. Again? Uh, there must be a hint around here somewhere. Could you go take a look? Yeah, I'm on it. What are you going to do? I'll see if I can do something about this on my own. On your own? Yep, on my own. I'm gonna switch this to auto. Lotus? 
Lotus pulled over the nearest chair and dropped herself down onto it in front of the keyboard. For a second, she stared at the screen. She kneaded her hands, knuckles popping, and twisted her back left, then right. All right. Let's kick some ass. Lotus smiled to herself and rubbed her hands together in anticipation. Then, before Junpei had time to blink, she was typing at an incredible speed, the click-clack of the keys running together like machine gun fire. Uh, what? Junpei was, for once, a la- didn't loss for that, words. did you? <laughs> of course I didn't! You're typing so fast, I-, I can't even see your fingers. What kind of job do you have? What are you? I'm unemployed at the moment. I used to work for a cybersecurity firm, but I quit. Why? Lotus blinked. Huh? Oh. Um. It was just... something. She stopped typing for a moment, and her face fell. I see. This was not an avenue of questioning to be pursued, Junpei realized, and quickly shut his mouth. Hm. Lotus's fingers began to move again, and in a few seconds she was back up to speed. As she typed, more letters and symbols that meant nothing to Junpei began to pour across the screen. Oh, uh, what are you doing now? I'm going to try and brute force it. Brute what? A brute force attack is... Well, the short version is that I just attacked the thing head on. The long version? Without looking up or slowing down, she began to explain. A brute force attack is one of the simplest ways to break a cipher. It checks every possible combination until it finds the right one. For a complex cipher, it can take a very long time. I'm writing a program that would run an attack like that on its own. It's not the most elegant solution, certainly. But given the circumstances, there isn't much else I can do. Even as she talked, her fingers never slowed or missed a key. Junpei couldn't help but feel a little odd. Oh, but back to what we were talking about earlier. What were we talking about? The wireless display? It's kind of strange if you think about it, isn't it? Now can I auto? Probably. Hmm. (laughs) How do I put it? She doesn't look Well, let's say you write a program that calculates an addition problem for you, all right? So you enter one plus one. The screen will show you two. See? Isn't that strange? Uh, no. Not really. Oh, come on now. Of course a caveman like you would think it was strange. You said so just a minute ago. He's not a caveman. Hmm? (laughs) You're just not getting it, are you? Who calculated one plus one? The, uh, the the main computer, right? You said it connected to the monitor wirelessly. In a cave, man. <laughs> no, that yeah, like that, it doesn't work. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, but someone who grew up in a cave wouldn't know that, right? They'd probably think that this thing here, the monitor, is doing the calculating. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't. But maybe because it's not fine. Once they've the decided word. that, they'll start examining this monitor. Like unless it's a singular word. It won't find it. They might poke the screen or something. Ah, I see the color changes when I press it here. Then they might investigate the hardware on the inside. Oh, I yes. see. So this wire supplies the power. Because I, I made it. I made sure that it would figure it out by typing Eventually, it like they that. They might even cut the wires. Ah, yes. Just as I expected. When this wire is cut, no results appear. Therefore, it must be this device which does the calculations. Yeah. Uh, but the truth is that, cave just is like you said, the computer is doing the calculating.
It's but the these name cave of my people wouldn't know that. Because they have no idea that the monitor and the computer are connected wirelessly. Also, a conversation is happening and we're not, like, fully paying attention to it. Lotus continued to type. Junpei scratched his head. So, uh, what are you trying to say? Nothing, really. It's just... I thought, maybe. What if the relationship between human beings and our brains is like that? Huh? Well, let's say you stick a bunch of electrodes into parts of the brain. <laughs> a scientist examining the signals they send out might say, Hmm, interesting. So stimulating this part of the brain causes the person to see colors. That must mean this neuron cluster controls that function. Okay, let's see what happens when I cut out this part. Ah, just what I thought. Cutting off this part causes that function to cease. Therefore, human thought processes must occur in the human brain. See? Doesn't it sound the same? Mmm, uh... Maybe the brain is just an output device, like this monitor. Maybe our thought processes actually occur somewhere else, in a main body. We just don't know it. We never even think about it. Just like those cave people wouldn't know about wireless communications. We can't imagine that there's some unknown medium that transfers information into our brains, where we experience that information as thoughts. Um... Junpei didn't say anything. Not so much because he had no retort. No, her argument just seemed... silly. And he was a little surprised to be hearing something like it from someone like her. The brain is just an output device. Human thought actually occurs somewhere else? <laughs> That's just crazy talk. Did Lotus really think that, he wondered? It was a little creepy, Junpei thought. It sounded altogether too much like a bizarre cultish religion. Maybe that's the cause of Seven's amnesia. Oblivious to Junpei's increasing discomfort, Lotus continued. If memory is actually stored somewhere else, in some sort of main body somewhere, maybe he hasn't forgotten anything at all. He's just having a difficult time accessing his memories because the monitor, his brain, has been damaged. Huh. I suppose that would explain aphasia and blindsight, too. Perhaps they actually can't speak or see. The monitor just isn't functioning properly. Hmm. I guess people with prosopagnosia could be suffering from the same thing. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Prosopagnosia? What? He knew what aphasia was from, from watching medical dramas on TV, and blindsight was easy enough to guess, but he'd never heard the word prosopagnosia before. She believes this, but not the figure in but exactly. What? You've never heard of prosopagnosia? <laughs> to be fair, I think for most people, this condition, prosopagnosia, people first hear, heard in this game. So this question of what? You've never heard of prosopagnosia? Is... Is also at the player. 
Lotus spun around in her chair to look at him. Junpei just shrugged and shook his head. No, what is it? Well, put simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's or even yours. So they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. That means that people with prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Usually they can make do by associating people with other things. Their voices, their clothes, their hair. Does that mean other people's faces look like uh, blanks? No. No, I don't think so. Well, you've seen monkeys, like in a zoo, right? To you and me, all the monkey faces look the same. Even though they've obviously got faces, it's almost impossible for a human to distinguish between them. The zoo staff that works with them would learn to identify different monkeys eventually. But you or I couldn't, unless one had a scar or something else to set it apart. Well, that's how people would be to someone with prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia? Huh. I didn't even know that kind of thing existed. Junpei did his best to act as though the entire lecture hadn't gone entirely over his head. And, um, uh, what were we talking about? The idea that your brain is just an output device, like a monitor. Are you serious about that stuff? Not really. I was just kidding for about half of it. And what about the other half? Well, I guess I was just adulting. Mm. Hmm. <sighs> Not funny. <laughs> Lotus's smile had something rather masochistic to it. It's nothing more than a story I made up out of boredom. Don't take it seriously. It was the first thing that came to mind, and I just talked about it to kill time. But, looks like I don't need to talk anymore. Why? I don't have to kill time any longer. As she spoke, Lotus raised her right arm high. And brought it down on the enter key. Oh, then you finished that brute whatever thing? I certainly did. And let's see what we got. Chunks of text flickered on and off in quick succession, and then a line of numbers appeared, blinked, and disappeared. The screen cleared, and all that was left was the word accepted. <laughs> Piece of cake. Lotus would clearly have patted herself on the back if it would not have made her look entirely ridiculous. And I coded it in Cobalt. <laughs> After a few seconds, the accepted disappeared to be replaced with... <laughs> This ranks slightly below saponification, 8 out of 10. Nine squares arranged in by a 3x3 three three square. The screen changed again. What the hell is that? Ooh, it's a puzzle. No idea. Looks like a puzzle. And let me guess, how many of you who've played this game brute forced this? Suddenly Lotus stood up. Huh? Uh, aren't you gonna, I don't know, do more computer stuff? No, I can't do any more. It won't let me do any more programming. See? The keyboard. Nothing. So, there's nothing more I can do. Um... Well, I guess I'll leave this to you then, Junpei. What? Let me take a break, alright? I did my part. Yeah, uh, well... He wasn't sure what to say to that. She certainly had done her part. In fact, without Lotus, they probably would have run completely aground. I shouldn't rely on other people so much, Junpei thought to himself. I guess you're right. Thanks, Lotus. No problem. And make sure you know when you should thank people. Now, I better take care of this myself. No more relying on anyone else. Junpei crossed his arms and stared at the puzzle down shown on the screen. I believe it is... The thing that Clover wrote on the paper is how you solve that. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> you could easily brute force it, but <laughs> it takes longer. <laughs> Alright, I solved it. Did you hear a noise just now? Yeah, I did. It sounded like something unlocking. Where did it come from? Don't need the computer anymore. Look, Junpei. The lights on the lockers are green. We must have unlocked it with the computer puzzle. There's more than one key in here. This one is small and looks like it goes to some sort of machine. 
And this one has the Earth symbol on it. I think the Earth symbol matches a keyhole in the door on the A deck. Well, if that's the case, we probably don't need the Earth key right now. Alright, Earth key? I'll just tuck you away deep in my pocket. Now as for the other key... What key is this? From the shape of it, I'd say it's not for a door. Probably some sort of device. Oh, what is it? I wonder. Do you think maybe this is the activation key for that thing? The activation key? Yes, it has to be. I feel good about this. It was just at that moment that he heard a voice behind him. It was Clover. Hey, Junpei, do you have a minute? He put the puzzle aside for the moment and walked over to Clover. What's up? I, um, I wanted to ask you something. Hmm? Junpei, you went into door five with my brother, right? Did you hear him say, like, anything weird? He got really scared every time I talked about the lights. <laughs> huh? And then he offered to... There was a bed. <laughs> Why is she asking me this, Junpei wondered. The more he thought about it, however, the more it made sense. The snake had been gone for a long time. Clover was quite attached to her brother. Of course she would have been worried about him. Well, let me think. He thought back to when he'd gone through door five, hoping he might remember something, even a small something that would help her. However... Sorry, Clover. I can't really think of anything. <laughs> he threatened to beat me up and he didn't like me squeezing the chair. That happened twice, by the way. <laughs> I mean, he did mention that his hearing exceeds that of a regular person or something like that, but that's about it. Okay. Clover's words were barely audible. She nodded vaguely to Junpei and turned to walk away. Uh, hey, uh, wait a minute. Hmm? Look, I, I don't know if I should ask you things, but... <laughs> yeah, and he kept asking. Well, he didn't ask that more than once. We just kept staring at the bed, and he was like, You seem to be paying close attention to that bed. Are you perhaps thinking of, of wanting me to sleep together with you on it? And he's just like, Stop! Don't! I don't know how to respond to that! If you don't mind, uh, I was hoping you could tell me if. Uh, is Snake. Uh, I mean, was he. Born... You're talking about his eyes? Yeah. No, he wasn't born blind. When he was a kid, he got in an accident. A really bad car accident. He couldn't see after that. And his arm. His arm? Yeah. My brother's left arm is... Um, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. The accident hurt him really bad. To save him, they... They had to cut off his arm. He got in an accident and was not in an accident? And not was in an accident? Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You want to make a joke, but it's too mean. <laughs> uh. Is that all you wanted to ask me? Talking about her brother had clearly taken a great deal out of Clover. Junpei nodded. Look, I'm, I I'm sorry for making you talk about all that painful stuff. I mean... If it, if it feels like it's leaning a little hard into something that could be considered ableism, I would hold off on that. It's not that. Clover only shook her head and walked off down the stairs. Okay, then it shouldn't be too... It shouldn't be bad. This key. The shay I skipped the text. Alright, I'm turning it on. <laughs> okay, the monitor is on now. 
and it's full of letters. It's showing some kind of warning. Power restored to experimental device. Emergency system will activate in the event of an abnormal subject behavior. Okay. Typing on this keyboard isn't doing squat. That mannequin looks so sad. I gotta admit, I'm starting to feel kind of sorry for it. Am I getting attached to this thing? Maybe I should give it a name. How about the science boy? Science boy is lying on the table. His poor head is full of electrodes. I forgot. I'm so glad I remembered to name the doll Science Boy. <laughs> Junpei, this thing here is on. In here is on now. Yeah, that's because we activated the power over on this side. Could you like play with it a little? Okay, yeah. I'll turn this dial here. Turn, turn, turn. Uh, I don't think it's working. Nothing happened. Well, maybe she missed something. I should ask her to look around the room again. Maybe if you increase the voltage? Roger. Will do. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to max voltage. Mean because it's about the accident itself. Ah! Hmm... I'm not sure. M max voltage? Hey! Wait, Clover! Ah, shit. Wh what Um, I, I think, uh... Oh my god! The, the mannequin's head! Oh man, that sounds like a fire alarm. G what the hell? Fire detected. Fire detected! The emergency system will be activated. <laughs> Evacuate the room immediately. Hey! Jump, hey! Do something! This is your fault! My fault? Is it? Junpei, it's so hot in here, help me! The monitor looks like it was almost melted by the heat from the fire. Junpei, it's so hot in here, help me! Science Boy's head is on fire. Science Boy, no! Oh, the humanity! What the hell is Science Boy? Are you, are you talking about the mannequin? Yes. Forget about the mannequin. You need to help Clover now. Science Boy's head's on fire. I feel bad for him, but he's already done for. I need to save Clover. Junpei, look at the light. Yes, it's green. The emergency system is activated and disabled the lock. Now we can save Clover. Junpei! Come on, kid, jump! She's safe. Oh, man, that smoke is some serious business. Time to close the store again, I think. Clover, are you okay? Are you hurt? <clears throat> Damn, she's coughing so hard she can't even talk. Uh, of course I'm not alright! What the hell took you so long, you big jerk? I was almost dead! S sorry I was going as fast as I could. I needed a second to mourn for the loss of Science Boy. You two can do this later. Right now, we need to get the hell out of here. That fire is not going to stay in that room forever. There's a mannequin on fire on the other side of the window. The skin is already melting and dripping off. I can see some of its metal bones. What are you doing, Junpei? Let's just get out of here! There's a mannequin on fire on the side of the window. <gasps> Science boy. 
You will be missed. Junpei, Clover, and Lotus leapt out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. <laughs> Whew, thank God we got out of there. Yeah, finally. <coughs> <sighs> All three collapsed against the wall, breathing heavily. <sighs> Junpei's heart was pounding in his chest and his whole body felt weak. He inhaled gulps of clear air, and, within each, one, and with each one he could feel his body begin to calm down. All right, let's go. Okay. They nodded to each other and started off down the hallway. Before long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Damn, none of these open. They're all locked. How about that one? The final door sat in a corner of the hallway. Let's hope this is the door with the prize. Junpei grabbed the door handle and was about to pull it open when... A voice cried out behind him. It was neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognized it. There was no doubt. The voice belonged to... Jumpy! Huh? He spun around. There at the other end of the hall... At the other end of the hall, Junpei saw human figures running toward him. Three of them. June? Santa! Seven! They stopped short in front of Junpei and his companions, gasping for air. Hey, what are you guys doing here? What? But we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Actually, wait. Hold on. Ah, yes, I don't have a choice if I go through that door. So, probably when we get to one of these endings? Uh... We either jump back here, like, I'm probably going to choose this one, and then we're going to jump back here and take this door, so that way we're just taken to this one. Because the only difference here is that there's a choice at it. And there's some dialogue, but all the progression here is the same. I'm just thinking ahead, oh. that's all. Don't worry. Hey guys, could you come take a look at this? She was standing near the end of, the, of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. Hey, on the wall. A map of the ship's interior? It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then? Door 7, and... Door 8. Yep, they both eventually end up at this hallway. In fact... Yeah, isn't that what I said? We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find Door 9. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door 9. And that's how the nonary game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. Wait a sec. This leads to... As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. Oh! You've got to be kidding me. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. We may as well go. Yeah. As one, they all moved back toward the door Junpei had only a moment ago been ready to open. Oh, I uh, almost forgot. We should keep this. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off of the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke, without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. They nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. They poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. I knew it. They were just where the map had said they would be. We're back. In the hospital room. I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. 
Okay, we're at it. The key? Oh, yeah. Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Here. Something small on the top towards you. Oh. <laughs> nice catch. Gee. Caught it and found that the object was a key. I see. So this is Jupiter. Someone has redeemed break time. I'm going to let you hold on to that, all right? Yeah, on it. Well, I've got something for you, too, then. Here, it's the Saturn key card. We found it in the kitchen. I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. Yeah, on it. So how many unused keys do we have now? There's the Earth key we found in the laboratory. The Jupiter key you just gave me. And the Saturn key card from Lotus. I'll keep them safe. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long straight hallway, right? There we go. Let's get to the choice. Because that'll be a good pausing point. We have a lot to get through. Huh, <sighs> an elevator heading to a submerged floor. a lot to get through. <laughs> I suppose I could just, like, walk away, but I'd also, there'd probably be another choice and I wouldn't we actually probably get... die. Oh, no. Don't be so casual about something like that. At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can, once we're done looking around down here. Why did he just, why did the auto, why did the skip stop just to say we'd probably die? Oh, I guess because I chose the other option that skipped the awkwardness. <laughs> All right. This is when we find out that Snake is dead. And we get to have a very detailed description of a corpse. Talking about the possibility of, oh, he was murdered.
just so we don't have to skip any... That way we don't have to have the skip turned off. Yeah, and Clover's like, I think Zero is one of us. <laughs> Still giving them the side eye. <laughs> You're so suspicious of him. <laughs> Doing the test. <laughs> We'd probably <laughs> thank you for that clip. <laughs> Door one, door two, door six. We went through door six last time. We're gonna go through door one. My choice is door one. Santa was unconvinced. Hey, wait a minute there. You cheating? Cheating? I'm asking if you changed your number after you heard what doors we wanted. How could I do that? I wrote it down on the paper earlier. Let me see that. Sure, here. Junpei shrugged and handed it to him. Santa examined it furiously. The others peered at it as well. As they did, Junpei quickly slipped the piece of paper he'd been hiding into his pocket. Although he'd never know it now, Santa had been justified in his suspicions. Junpei had switched papers. I had three pieces of paper ready. For doors one, two, and six. And I put the one with door six on it into the pot put a small mark on it so that he would know which one was his. I just needed to make sure I drew last. After I saw everyone else's result, I just chose whatever door I wanted. If the number I'd already put in matched, then I didn't have to switch the paper out. Well, what does it say? He fought the urge to smirk. <laughs> you got lucky. Santa snorted and tossed the paper aside, frustrated. Very well. We've decided who will go through door one. It will be Clover, Junpei, and myself. One plus four plus five equals ten. One plus zero equals one. Our only problem is the two remaining teams. June and I want door six. Lotus and I want door two. That's not good. We can't open either of those doors with only two people. <laughs> Aw. Fine. Seven, we'll go through door six. Three plus six plus seven plus eight equals 24. Two plus four equals six. Sure thing. I didn't really want to go through door two anyway. Besides, if we've got a younger girl with us, it'll lower the average age. Right, June? Uh, well, I, I am... Um... June was at a loss for words. Lotus was not. <laughs> a pig. You just wait and see. Her eyes were the eyes of a woman prepared to kill. A shiver ran down Junpei's spine. Calling me old. This is why men are such a pain in the ass. They're about as subtle as a brick. And they're at it again. She is. Even after they separated at the staircase, Lotus was still muttering angrily to herself. I'll see you later, June. Jumpy. Circumstances dictated that Junpei and June would have to part ways again, but this time it didn't sting quite so much. Don't make that face. It'll be like what Seven said. We aren't going to be, be split up permanently, up permanently till we find, we find door, door nine. nine. 
We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door night. That's how the notary game works. Seven's words took a weight off of Junpei's shoulders and felt much better. It'll be fine. I'll see you soon. All right. See you later. <laughs> Lingering uneasy remained, but they went their separate directions without much trouble. Junpei, Ace, and Clover headed toward A deck. Here's A deck. It was the door on the left, right? Mm. Yes, there is, and it looks phenomenal, regardless of what people say. The fusion of 2D and 3D. It can be done, but it's difficult, and it's especially difficult to do in anime format, but the entire movie is in 3D. And I think it looks great. Like, obviously, there are still limitations to choosing it to be in 3D. But the fact that they decided to go completely 3D rather than just doing, like, a fusion. You don't know what it is at all. <laughs> Though some people don't like the way Vash looks because he has such a distinctive style in the original Trigon, and the movie makes him look a lot younger and softer. <laughs> he looks like a boy. Hello, Daryl. Yes, Metroid Prime remaster. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he will still. He just looks different, because he's... He doesn't have the the 80s to 90s anime hairstyle where hair must defy gravity. <laughs> I understand that it's a point of contention, but I think in regards to, like, anything pertaining exclusively to the CGI, I think they did really well with what they were working with. Like, I feel like the design change is a more subjective thing where you could argue for one over the other very easily, but I but if you dis if you're dismissing the movie exclusively because it's in 3D, you didn't see the trailer. <laughs> you just saw screenshots and were like ugly and were like no. Huh? <laughs> yeah, pe I understand that people are just not a f some people are not a fan of the way he looks. I don't think I don't really like mind much either way. I'm gonna watch it because the animation do be looking smooth. It's just for the same reasons that I want to watch the uh, Loop in the Third movie that was done entirely in 3D. Although that one is definitely more true to the 2D designs. It, have, if anyone's seen anything of that movie, if you don't agree, I'm shocked because I think that movie looks beautiful. <laughs> that should be it, yes. Then here we go. <laughs> it opened and they walked through. It's just as Santa and Lotus said. At the end of the hallway sat a door with a large red one on it. A numbered door. To the left of it, bolted to the wall, was the red. There's the red. I'll go first. Ace went first and waved his wrist over the scanner panel. Now the two of you, if you would. Junpei was next. Finally, listlessly, Clover lifted her arm. She leaned toward the scanner panel. The third asterisk clicked to the life, shining brightly. Ace took hold of the lever. Now. He took a deep breath and turned to Junpei and Clover. Are you ready? Shall I pull it? Yeah, anytime. Hmm. 
Clover said nothing. She nodded, little more than a lethargic twitch of the head. Very well, then. Let's go. Three, two, one. And it's open! Move it! They stumbled into the room. Where? Where is it? Frantically, Junpei scanned the room. His eyes stopped on the device that would determine whether they lived or died. Uh, there it is! Over there! Next to the door they'd come through was the dead. As one, they ran to it. They put their hands over it as if they were fighting for it. Stopped. Yes, it did. Junpei could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Ace and Clover were breathing hard and fast. Whew. I don't believe I'll ever get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. <laughs> I agree. Now then. Junpei looked around again, this time more slowly. There's another door. Let's try opening it. He took hold of the knob and easily, gently pulled it open. So, this is the wheelhouse? He closed the door again and turned to Ace and Clover. He fixed each in turn with a meaningful stare, then spoke. Ace, you investigate the wheelhouse next door. Very well. <clears throat> Clover, you're in charge of this room. Uh, Say something! Okay, I will. Alright then, let's get started. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take a break here. Knife ending, right? <laughs> Knife ending. Ooh. So you can enjoy this one's theme. It's not as cool <laughs> as the previous room's theme, but somebody did redeem break time. It'll be a short one, though, because I don't want to go too late. But we're... I'm gonna be honest here. We're sneaking up to an ending really quick. So I want to at least get to another ending bef before I end this stream. Uh, so... Break time! Whoa! Returned. I am. So let's solve a puzzle. <laughs> Thank you. Books. The shelves are lined with books. Let's see what's in this blue one. There's something written on it. Ship's log. Huh. Ship's log, huh? Ugh. Let's file. Perfect. I remember. We soon leave for a new journey across the sea. After leaving port, we headed south and west. We turned south southwest to steer around the continent, then proceeded northwest. We made port, then changed our heading to east for a time, and are now heading due north. Soon we will dock in the United Kingdom, the homeland of this vessel. Oh. Cool. Oh. A chair. Clover isn't very talkative. She looks kind of out of it. Is she thinking about Snake? A chair. There's nothing special about it. That's a pocket watch. She sure hasn't been saying much. And she just keeps looking at the floor. She seems kind of sad. Pocket watch. An old one, too. The kind you have to wind. Hands have stopped at 5 minutes 39 seconds past 10 o'clock. Huh. I wonder if it's broken. Yeah, I don't feel anything moving when I fiddle, fiddle with the dial here. Looks like I could move the hands manually, though. A voice had he hadn't expected startled Junpei from his examination of the pocket watch. Oh, pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? He spun around to find Ace standing in the doorway. Junpei shrugged and handed him the pocket watch. Hey, man. 
what are you doing over in this room? Oh, I just thought I'd come check up on the two of you. Is there a problem? Well, not a problem, but... Junpei looked desperately around the room, anywhere but at Ace, trying to find a convincing reason to dismiss him. Ace opened his mouth and took another look at Junpei and shut it again. A small smirk appeared on his face. Oh, I see, of course. Looked Junpei over and glanced at Clover. I apologize for the intrusion. Well, best of luck. Ace gave Junpei a knowing pat on the shoulder and left. Ow. Ugh. For no reason he could fathom, Junpei's head began to hurt. Ah, what the hell? Ah, my head. A sharp pain in his head. How much time passed? He wasn't sure. But he did notice when Ace strode through the door. His smile was more of a smirk, and he had the air of a man who knew more than his opponent. Ah, uh, yes. There was something I wanted to... check, if you don't mind. Yeah? Uh, what's that? Pardon me. With no warning, Ace slipped his hand into the pocket of Junpei's vest. Hey! What, what the hell are you doing? Well, what are you putting your hand in my pocket for? Stop! He reached for Ace's arm. But it was already too late. I... Uh, uh... In the older man's hand were the pieces of paper Junpei had balled up and hidden in his pocket. Just as I thought. You switched them, didn't you, when we voted? Uh... <sighs> well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. Then, why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. A smiled, gave Junpei a friendly pat on the shoulder, and then turned on his heel and left. <sighs> it was a small defeat, but it was a defeat. Junpei had lost the upper hand, and he knew it. He could feel his stomach begin to tense. <sighs> Damn. I'm suddenly in here, hello! <laughs> Don't tell about it. <laughs> the right drawer, let's have a look. Nothing. The left drawer, let's have a look. Nothing. This is a pretty empty desk. My brother's desk looked a lot like this. Because he couldn't see, he never put stuff on it that he didn't need. Damn, that's... What am I supposed to say to that? Poor kid. It's a light. Well, I guess she doesn't really feel like talking. She's not really paying attention to anything, is she? Mine must be somewhere else. It's a wooden box. Maybe a case for letters? Hey, Clover, you ever write letters? Nothing. Shelves are lined with books. Looks like they all have something to do with sailing. None of these look very useful. This map looks weird. What is it? It's a map of the world, but with the Atlantic Ocean in the middle. It probably looks weird, because you're not used to seeing it that way. World map of the Atlantic Ocean in the center. There's something on it. A chair. A chair. Clover isn't talking much. Well, I guess that's understandable. I mean, she's been through a lot. Really, it's more surprising that she's still together enough to talk at all. A chair. It seems solemn somehow, and melancholy. A light. It looks kind of like a wilted flower. Stack of nautical charts. I think this is a nautical chart? There's this line on it, here. I think the line is the route the ship is supposed to take. There are these dots all over the map. Oh, those are probably ports, like for a boat to stop at. It looks like the lines connect the dots. 
There's a stack of charts like that one. Yeah. How many are there? I'm not really sure, but I'd say somewhere in the ballpark of ten or so? I guess this is probably for reading maps, or something. Yeah, they probably spread the map out here and there to decide on the route. Junpei, are you trying to open that door? Forget it. It's pointless. I tried it earlier. It won't open. This is the door we came in through. We can't go back. The dead is bolted to the wall here. World map with the Atlantic Ocean in the center. There are a number of red pins in several locations. What do these red pins mean? Well, the nautical charts I picked up earlier have a map like this one. Maybe one of them matches up to the pins or something. Let's see. Well, what do you know? Looks like this one's a match to the pins. Okay, so we've got seven connections connected by... Locations connected by straight lines. And each one has a word next to it. That's probably the speed. Okay. Hmm. The helm. Well, the steering wheel might be a more appropriate term. This thing won't budge. It's like there's something keeping it in place. That would be the point. What would be the point of moving? The ship is stopped. What would be the use of steering it? Yeah, I know, still. The compass. It appears to be broken, however. You see, the glass cover has been smashed to pieces. Mm, this isn't good. So many drawers, but nothing is inside them. The helm. It won't move. A desk. There's nothing in the drawers. There's another room on the other side of the window. Oh, that's the room I was just in. I'm sorry. <laughs> What is this? Some kind of display? It looks like an electronic scoreboard. I imagine it was added recently. Nothing on it right now, though. It looks like this is the only exit. This looks familiar. I saw something earlier that's the same shape as this hole. I know it. It says lock in bright red letters. Uh... That's calculator. Uh, item is tab. Got it. A mechanical pocket watch with a spring. It doesn't appear to be working. Hands have stopped at 5 minutes 39 seconds past 10 o'clock. Turning the knob does nothing. Yeah, it's probably broken. Looks as though you could move the hands, however. Looks like this is some sort of lock. It's got a weird shaped indentation on it. Huh? It's shape. Maybe... It does look like the pocket watch would fit here. Nothing. Now I imagine the pocket watch is intended to go in. However, we may need to do something with the watch first. An engine order telegraph. They use this on old ships to adjust the speed of the ship. Like the gear shift in a car? Well, it's a little different. This device doesn't connect directly to the engine. In short, it's a transmitter. The navigation officer uses it to set the speed of the ship, and it sends a signal to the engine. And there's a handle on top of it, which can be moved back and forth to- Hold on. Hmm? There's no handle. You're right. There isn't. It looks as though it was deliberately removed. And what destiny does it point us to? I really hope you don't think that sounded cool. <laughs> he looks so sad! <laughs> the needle is pointing north. <laughs> ah, a human hammer. They're often used to subdue large men like Seven! <laughs> what? 
that was a joke, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Ace, you really kind of suck at making jokes. <sighs> that was rather cruel. <laughs> it's just like the other one. <laughs> it's broken, though. Can't really use something that's broken. <sighs> steering wheel. Let's see. Whoa! Looks like the steering wheel moves. So it would seem. Now, I noticed something else as well. Mm, what's that? Well, when you move this wheel, the compass also moves. Uh, what do you mean? The ship. It's moving. Ha! <laughs> Tricked you, didn't I? The wheel and the compass must be connected to one another somehow. No! Don't! Hmm. You think that's important? Well, let's try turning it again. I don't remember. Oh. South. West. Southwest. Northwest. East. North. Southwest. Southwest. Northwest. East. North. Okay. Oh. The handle came off. Huh. Stooping so low, are you zero? Handle. The handle came off the steering wheel. Hmm, the handle. Oh. Full half slow, full half dead stop. Full half slow, full half dead stop. FHS. F H D S. That doesn't help. Uh, full half slow, full half dead stop. So I sure hope this handle fits. Yes, it fits. Excellent. That should allow us to operate the engine order telegraph. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Half slow full half dead stop. Easy. Huh? That's weird. Thought I put in the right speed. Did I mess up? No, I don't think so. Look, something happened on the back wall of the wheelhouse. Yeah, you're right. Let's check it out. There's something on the wall that looks kind of like an arrival board. There are a whole bunch of words on the left side of the display. What the hell is this? There are names of ports across the world. I imagine it's showing us to the ship's route. You know, just like the ones you might see at an airport. Departing XX Carrier, XX Flight, XX at XX Clock. Like that. Oh, I get it. It does look like those are the names of all the ports along the ship's route. It looks like only one of those has a time on it, though. The time on the last r line, right? Ten seconds past three o'clock. Perhaps that's the arrival time? Hmm. Oh, perhaps. Oh, what's he doing? Excuse me, Junpei. Hey, he just took my pocket watch! Again! <laughs> hey! What the hell are you doing? Just trust me.
It should be fine now. Well, thanks for giving me the pocket watch back, but you don't need to look so smug about it. Let's see what he... Oh, he moved the hands. Ten seconds past three o'clock. Oh, so you changed it to match the final arrival time. Ace nodded slowly. You know what to do next, right? Give it a shot. Pocket watch. Hands show ten seconds past three o'clock. It's set to the same time as the estimated arrival time at the final destination. What are you doing? There's only one thing for you to do, you know. Now, give it a try. Looks like this is some sort of lock. It's got a weird shaped indentation on it. Actually, it's shaped just like this pocket watch I've got. Let's try putting this in there. Hey! Yes! It says open now. Good work. It seems you were successful. Well done, Junpei. Hey! Clover! What? Look, we unlocked the door! Now we can get out of this room. Oh. Well, let's go then. Clover. It's far too narrow to be called one. They found themselves in a small space outside of the wheelhouse. On their left was a wooden door. This seems to be the only route. Yeah, let's go. Junpei pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. Wow. It was full of all manner of turn-of-the-century electronic equipment. Well, these machines are... weird. I I've never seen any of them before. Huh? Wait, this one is... One smaller machine had a metal bar that ended in a circular handle. Ace seemed to recognize it. Ah, oh, yes. A telegraph key. These were used to transmit Morse code a long time ago. He turned and slowly took in the room. This must be the communication office. Across the room from the door they'd entered through was another door. And that door? A metal plaque was nailed to it. It read, Captain's Quarters. Huh. That's what it says. Then, do you think... Ace swallowed. Junpei could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. She walked up to the door and put her hand on the knob. It opened easily, and without so much as a pause, she walked in. Junpei and Ace followed. The first thing they saw was a man on the floor, covered in blood. <laughs> Junpei felt his body seize up. His mouth went dry, and he felt very, very cold. The blood in his veins slowed to a crawl, and his heart tightened like a fist. <sighs> Not again. This was the third time he'd seen the horror of death laid out before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand to see much more of. Still, he had begun to accept that whatever it was that he saw, whatever happened to him, was beyond his control. And whatever force controlled him was driven by a determination that he could not hope to match. Damn. A sense of helplessness, of desperation, watched, washed over him left behind a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed its way through his body like acid. No, wait. We didn't check his pulse yet. Maybe he's still alive. Fueled by that spark of hope, Junpei ran to the man's body, and his heart fell. 
when he touched his hand to his neck. No pulse. His pupils had dilated, and he wasn't breathing. Well, he's dead. Damn. If only we knew how it happened. Junpei lifted the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound on his chest. These wounds... Uh, I wonder what killed him. Junpei did not have to wonder long. It must have been this. For lying next to the corpse was an axe. The entire blade of it was drenched in bright red blood. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it had been made by the axe. Junpei looked at the body again. A lake of blood stretched out around it. It was wearing the clothes of a ship's captain, although they were stained with blood. These clothes? A captain? Does that mean this guy was zero? On his left hand was a bracelet. The number on the bracelet was... Zero. Bracelet zero! It was only then that Junpei noticed the stench of blood that filled the room. <sighs> he couldn't help but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. It was too simple, too obvious, too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Junpei might have thought it was a joke. Junpei... It may be wise to find a way out of here first. Yeah, you're right. Part 2! We ain't out of the room yet! Junpei, where are you going? I was... gonna... pop over to the communications office and talk to Ace. You're... gonna leave me alone in here? You could, um... stay with... here with me a little longer. There are still lots of places we haven't looked. Okay. What's the deal with this? Is it some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. They all start with zero and end with eight, F, N, or V, respectively. Maybe this has something to do with number bases. <laughs> I'm sure this is the captain's quarters. But where are the captain's dollar bills? Find a way out, bro. We don't find who's safe. This is true. I hate hexadecimals. <laughs> There's a bunch of weird buttons on here. Probably switch what you see on the screens. You know, do you know how to work this thing? Um, why don't we just press one of these? Like this one. Well, I guess it does change the... What the hell is this? Huh. Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter each, spelling out... Z-E-R-O, huh. It's like he's making fun of us. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Clover nodded. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured toward the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. I know it's important to figure out who this guy is, but... Don't you think we should figure out how to get out of here first? But... Please, I don't want to waste any more time. <sighs> Clover looked miserable, as if she could start crying at any moment. Junpei just didn't have the heart to tell her no. Alright, sure thing. Was his mind playing tricks on him, Junpei wondered. 
For a moment, he could have sworn he'd seen Clover smile. And suddenly I am in this room. Hello, I was not down in the room. Why am I teleporting? A camcorder. Looks like it's pointed at the door. Well, the power is on. Why would someone want to videotape a door? I think this kind of camera records to a hard drive. But it doesn't look like this one's recording anything. What do you mean? It's just sending whatever it sees to something. What does it see? The door. Oh. Hey, isn't the door on that screen the one right behind us? You're right. So whatever that camera sees is sent to the screen in real time. I wonder if that means something, you know? Hmm. Looks like it doesn't work anymore. A bed. There's nothing in it. A bed. Nothing suspicious here. Music box. Oh, it's one of those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? Why does it sound like that? Is it broken? And the pins on the cylinder are shaped all weird. I don't think those are the pins. It looks like someone put something else on top of it. I think we're gonna have to take it apart to figure out what's going on, don't you? Oh. It's a lamp. But it doesn't turn on. I don't think there's anything special about it. A small table. There's blood on the chair. Do you think this was the dead guys? Yeah, probably. There's blood on the chair. Kinda creeping me out. There's a plaque on the door, but it doesn't say anything. The control panel for the electronic lock. I guess we gotta put in a passcode. I don't think it's just about numbers. There's a hole in the bottom of it right here. I think you need to put a key in first. Then we will figure it out. It shows up in the middle of the top screen back there. You've got a short lifeline, Junpei. Hey, mind your own business! Small screwdrivers. Mm, a set of small screwdrivers. Perhaps we can use them to dismantle small devices. A music box. Would you wind it for us, Junpei? <laughs> Sounds rather odd. What's this? The pins on the cylinder look rather strange. In fact, these don't look like pins at all. It appears it looks to be some sort of board. We'll need to dismantle it to get a better one. Okay, we'll do. Boop! Cylinder. This would be a cylinder for a music box. There are a number of pins and some pieces of metal that look rather like fans attached to it. Mm -hmm. Woo! Ink! A bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. Th thanks. <laughs> Astute observation. It's an old telegraph machine. I'll be honest. I have no idea how it works. Yeah, Val's right here. I'm petting him right now. It's an old telegraph machine. Nothing suspicious here. Look, a hook. That wasn't a joke! I know, man. <laughs> it's a hook for hanging clothes, I think. Junpei, what are you doing? We've searched the wheelhouse from top to bottom. There's no reason to go back. In fact, don't you think it would be wise to investigate the captain's quarters? I think we ought to check both rooms, don't you? Yes, yes. This is a really long cable. The tip is hooked into one of the desk's drawers. Looks as though that drawer is the only thing that's locked. I don't see a keyhole, though. An electric lock, perhaps? Take a look at the left side of the drawer. 
Yeah, there's some cables over there. That must mean a chair. And we have nothing to say about this chair. We really don't have anything to say about this chair. A chair. It's a chair. If I sit in it, will you let me be chairman? No. No. <laughs> hey, what is this? It's blank. There's something written on it. Paper! Why a piece of paper? It's blank. A pair of headphones. I can't hear anything. Yes, whatever they were connected to doesn't work anymore. Just a normal light. Well, it won't turn on, so maybe not that normal. Hey, Ace! Look! It's a monkey with glasses! How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? <laughs> it also kind of looks like someone who's been watching too much TV. To be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no goddamn idea what this thing really is. It's probably some kind of radio transmitter. No, I didn't want to look at that. Hey, Ace, look! It's a model of a steam train! How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? To be honest, I have no goddamn idea what this thing really is. It's probably some kind of radio transmitter. It's a telegraph key. A machine for transmitting Morse code. I tried sending an SOS earlier, but I doubt that did anything. Zero would never make it that easy. So, you think it's broken? No, it works. I'm just not sure if it actually transmits anything outside of the ship. Hmm. Hey, look. There's a big-ass rat trap over here! I told you that's a telegraph key! It's a device that transmits messages to voice code. He's so angry. <laughs> the telegraph key. There's no cheese on it, unfortunately. <laughs> a clock mounted on the wall. The hands aren't moving. A little surprised that the time is wrong then, I suppose. And there's nothing on the back. Okay. Well, I would go back over here. And show Clover all this stuff. Ace is angry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Sorry for yawning. White piece of paper. It's blank. Uh, Clover, look at this thing. This is a cylinder for a music box, right? Well, blah, remember the pins and then that makes a song? Looks like there's something besides the pins on this cylinder, though. Yeah, there's these things that look kind of like little metal fans, I guess. A bottle of ink. Well, this would be great if we had an old school pen, but otherwise it's pretty useless. Um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder? Dirty cylinder. Huh? You put the ink on the cylinder from the music box? Yeah. Why would you do that? got a theory. A theory that I will expand upon after I show Ace what I've done. <laughs> Look at my magical work. Ah, yes, I see. You put ink on the cylinder. Yeah. If I roll it across a piece of paper, the pins of the fans will leave marks on it, right? The pins will make dots and the fans will leave lines. Alright then, show us. Now I just gotta roll the cylinder across a piece of paper, and if I'm right, the ink should... Just as you suspected, right? Now you have a pattern of dots and lines on the paper. I imagine it's Morse code. These dots and lines are the dots and dashes of Morse code. Amazing. What is this? It's just a bunch of lines and dots. I put ink on the cylinder from the music box. Then I rolled it across the paper and it left this. Is it some kind of Morse code? Or some kind of code? I think it's probably Morse code. Oh. Morse code. Man, we need to get you out of here. <laughs> Alright, I got the Morse code I'm supposed to enter. If I do this right, something will happen. I hope. Alright, let's give this a shot. last one, and... Yes! Excellent work, Jude. Good job. 
You seem to have figured it out. You've unlocked the drawer. Amazing. Open that bad boy. A red file lay in the drawer. <laughs> happy, he's just happy. Junpei reached down and picked it up. Uh, I never watched The Breakfast Club, but I know Fisk read the book, I think. Huh, it looks like there's something on the cover. A-L-L-I-C-E. But isn't it supposed to say all ice? This doesn't have a space between the L and the I. Are they saying that A-L-L-I-C-E is a single word? It was an interesting thought, but it left Junpei's mind quickly as he opened the file. What lay inside was far more interesting, and far more confusing. Each page was covered with strange characters. They looked like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horn anim horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. There were many pages in the file, and each was full of these strange symbols. What the hell is this? He didn't realize he'd spoken out loud until Ace looked over at him. They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would make you think I could? What the hell? Junpei flipped through a few more pages. Shh, Val, it's okay. It wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Whoa, the, the whole thing's like that. Trying to read them was pointless. Junpei wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made to close the file, and something fell out. Huh? What's this? He bent down and picked it up. Oh, a, a keycard. There's a symbol on it that reminded Junpei of the symbols for the Saturn and Mercury keycards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Junpei looked over to see Ace examining the card. <laughs> he has presented me with a ball. <laughs> in addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card as well. Something's written on the bottom. Bottom deck library. This must be the key to the library, then. Is the bottom deck a library? <sighs> anyway... Whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. He gripped the keycard tighter and shoved it deep into his pocket. There's a key in the drawer. I guess it was hidden under the red file. Unique key. A key with a leather case. It isn't metal. My guess it would be ceramic. Junpei, have you found a keyhole that might fit it? Breakfast Club isn't a book unless there is a novelization afterwards. There probably was. Or there was a book that was, like, about it. I don't remember. Maybe she didn't read a book then. I have a thing! Quick, Clover, look! What is this, the key? Seems that way. The tip is square. Do you think maybe you're supposed to use it over there? Shove the thing into there. Maybe the key I got earlier? Sweet. Just had to put that key in and now it's on. Junpei, look! There's a minus sign on the screen. There are eight of them. That probably means we've got to put in eight digits. Do you think you can figure it out? Um... There's a way to. Hmm... John Hughes didn't write novels. Yeah, it was probably something that just had Breakfast Club in it, but it wasn't Breakfast Club. It looks like a knife with a missing grip. Let me look this up real quick, because I know there was a book that she read.
There is a book written by Kate Costello that is called The Breakfast Club. That's not the book that she was reading, though. There's the screenplay. There's Marcus Rashford's The Breakfast Club Adventures. I don't think any of these were the books. But there was something that she did read. Hmm, I'll have to ask her later when I'm not streaming. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> so, it's an eight-digit code. The letters on the TVs spell zero. There are 26 letters in the alphabet. However, the numbers don't start for the alphabet until 10, because A equals 10. <laughs> yeah, but... I wasn't recognizing any of the books that it was, but also we don't own the book anymore. I'm certain she had it donated to our library. But I'm not going to the library to see if it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... So, zero, the Z must be, because there are 26, 36, since it starts at 10, right? So, 36, 14. <laughs> 36, 14. Oh my god, did I get it wrong? Ooh. 14 was right! 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So it should be thirty six fourteen twenty seven twenty four. Oh my god. Oh, hopefully I wrote this in a journal somewhere. Because I remembered being very frustrated at this. Thank you. 
You could catch up on catch twenty two. <laughs> Okay, so here's the pin. But I think after that... <sighs> yeah. Zero, okay. Okay, let me try this one more time. Wait, are there twenty six or is it twenty five? Because A starts on 10. You know, I was thinking 36, but because it's 0, it's 5. Hello and welcome to pain. I'm glad I figured it out eventually while checking my notes to see how the hell I got that. Um, I was overbraining it in a dumb way. I did it, it worked. Good job, Junpei! You did it! <laughs> took longer than you probably wanted it to. <laughs> Excellent. You seem to have unlocked it. No. 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 Good work, Junpei. Actually, hold on. Did you rub your nose while you were... Hello. Oh, I have a face. Can you hold still so I can look at your nose? <laughs> I like when I lean over my mic, the camera trying to figure out where, where I'm going. <laughs> Shh. All right, let's go. Agreed. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit before turning left like a great backward L. All right, let's go. Junpei rounded the corner and took off down the straightaway. He ran. And ran. And ran. He ran so far away. At the end of the hallway was a door. That's the next door. He made straight for it. Wait, a piece of paper. He was nearly halfway to it when he noticed a piece of paper in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Couldn't get away. <laughs> Junpei skidded to a halt. <laughs> this is... He dropped down to his hands and knees and quickly tore the paper off of the floor. Map of the ship's interior for a deck. Uh, something something relationship doesn't want to be a part of, so he ditches. Nope. No. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong? Aliens. Oh. Interesting. 
Ace, slightly slower by virtue of his advanced age, had finally caught up to Junpei. I found a map for this floor. He showed Ace what he had snatched from the wall. He looked at it long enough to determine what it was and nodded. I see. With that, he began running again past Junpei. Well, that was anticlimactic. Huh. I should keep this, though. Junpei shoved the map into his pocket and got up to follow Ace. But something stopped him. Hey, uh, where's Clover? He turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Damn it. What the hell is she up to? Junpei muttered angrily under his breath and took off back the way he'd come. As he stomped around the corner, he saw her. <laughs> ah, they're fine. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarters, her hand on the doorknob. Screaming herself, that's what that weird noise is. Clover! Huh? As Junpei watched, she closed it gently and quietly. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Clover had unconsciously put her hands over the pockets of her jacket as if trying to hide something. What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... Hmm, I wonder... What the hell? Come on, we gotta hurry! With that, Clover ran straight past a somewhat confused Junpei. As she did, he caught a glimpse of her back. Huh? Clover, what's that on your back? Sticking up from her collar was something that looked like a big wooden stick. A stick? Hey, Clover! What the hell's that thing on your back? She didn't respond. Instead, she quickly turned the corner and disappeared. Is she ignoring me? Check Discord for cursed image. All right. What did you do? <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! For crying out loud. Jupe did his best to convince himself that it would make sense later and ran off after Clover. If it's not the Nauta the Killer Moon, I'm not interested. It's Nautica the Killer Moon. No, it's a, it's a screenshot of uh, the camera trying to track me behind my mic. I am not where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Junpei pushed the, through the door and found himself in a large room with a large set of stairs. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Just like it says on the map. It was just what he'd expected to see after reading the map. His I see after reading the map himself meant that Ace had probably realized the same thing. Yes, I planned Ace, to. Ace, did he head down? I tested it and I have my clear data. So... He put his hand on the handrail and leaned over to look down. Oh, there he is. Look! The four others are there, too! And not just Ace. Santa, June, Seven, and Lotus as well. Really? Let's join them! Junpei and Clover glanced at each other and hurried down the stairs. They reached B-Deck at the same time. Jumpy! Clover! June's face was excited. Something had happened. That much Junpei could tell by simply looking at her. What's up? Sugary yogurt? What, did I say that? Oh, uh... Pickled chicken. That was the name. <laughs> the screenshot is probably still in the gaming tab. <laughs> Given their situation, he was not inclined to be excited about sudden developments. 
June, however, couldn't contain herself. We found it! Found what? Pickled chicken the hell? Uh, casual gaming with... Okay, so Fisk's got a few names. Fisk is Fisk, but before Fisk was Fisk, Fisk was Big Fish Old Guy. Before Fisk was... After Fisk was Big Fish Old Guy, they became Tasty Man. But before Big Fish was Big Fish, it was Pickled Chicken. And basically, those were the names of the main characters for the Persona games. So, we played them backwards. We played five, then four, then three. So, we play- so... <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Persona 5 protagonist, Joker, he was... Big Fish, old guy. <laughs> Persona 4 protagonist was Pickled Chicken, though it was spelt backwards, so it was technically Chicken Pickled. Because it asks for your last name first, and we put Pickled first. Oops. Uh, so... Or we put Chicken first, that's what we did. Or whatever. Just keep it- yeah, I'm gonna keep a Z variant. Um, and then in 3 we named him Tasty Man, and we actually got the order correctly. I was like... Make, your la make sure your last name is Man. So yes, technically it's Man Tasty in the Japanese order of things, but that's why I kept mentioning when I was playing Persona 3 that it was really funny when Mitsuru was being respectful and calling us by our last name, but because our last name was Man, it just sounded like she was saying, Man? <laughs> or just sounding like really bro-esque. You're a really good leader to this team, Man. <laughs> We found it! <laughs> and it's like, thank you, Mitsuru. I appreciate it. <laughs> what did you find? The last door! So that's why uh, Fisk's at handle on Twitter is Tasty Man. Although she had to add a second N. <laughs> we found door nine! Yes, that was the logic. <laughs> what? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Seven turned and jogged off down the stairs. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. The rest followed. Jumpy! We finally made it! The relief and excitement in her voice echoed what each one of them felt. Talk your trouble, next. I'm probably gonna name him... Z Beastie, because Persona 4 Golden, it was Zitaku the Beast. As one word. And I didn't like that, and also I couldn't fit that in Q. So he was Zitaku Beastie. And then in PQ2, I just named him... Z... Beastie, I believe. Because we have ZB, BZ, Z, Ziku, <laughs> that's right. And then uh, and by Q2, it was just Z Beastie. Yeah, it's finally time. Junpei wasn't quite ready to believe they'd really done it. At least, not just yet. Still, if everyone said that it was door nine, then it probably was. We've reached the end. Yes, we are going to be BZ Taquito. Because we had ZB Taco. Oh yes, and Zebby, the fucking typo. <laughs> From Q1. He could feel his heart racing. A mixture of anticipation and fear ran through his veins, and he could feel his legs shaking. He was doing his best to maintain a sense of healthy skepticism, but he couldn't deny that the prospect of escape was an exciting one. But something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people. 
Is there a way? Junpei looked over at the clock. 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey! Junpei! Jun! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Santa's voice jilted Junpei out of his reverie. Let's go, Jumpy! Time to... Er, oh, sorry. Time to what? What was I fucking gonna say? Uh, June took off down the stairs, jogging as quickly as she could. Yeah. <laughs> Time to start reading. <laughs> Junpei followed. They were quiet for a while until... Time to get moving, yes. They had just reached Sea Deck when Clover spoke. Hey, what about door two? Everyone else stopped. They all turned to look at Clover. Seven spoke. What about door two? Door two is the only one we didn't... We haven't gone through it, I mean. Yes, that is true. Are you guys okay with that? Not investigating it, I mean? So what? We found door nine. We don't need any of the other doors. What's the point? Huh? What's the point in going to door nine? Hmm. Huh. We can't all go through it, right? Hmm. Huh. Then we should do what we have to do before we go any further. Hmm. Huh. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. The best way to finish it quickly is to do the border pieces first. You know? Uh. Or what? You think all seven of us should go to door nine? And then we argue over who stays behind and who gets to go? Do we really want to do that again? <laughs> who knows? If we check out door two, maybe we'll find something. Maybe we can find a way to get all of us out. Huh. I don't know what might be in there. We may not find anything. But don't you think it'd be better to at least have a look? I mean, am I wrong? Does that sound wrong to you guys? Hmm. <sighs> yeah, you do have a point. The others nodded in agreement. The last time I checked the clock, it was 4.30. It's not like we've got a lot of time, but if we're quick about it, we might have time to take a look. You're right. Let's go take a look at door two. They were back in front of the elevator. Nearby was the large hospital room. The elevator can take us down to door two. Who shall go then? Let's see. Me. Then June, seven, and I need to go with her. Four plus three plus six plus seven equals twenty. Tw two plus zero equals two. Don't know why I said twenty like that. Hey, why do you get to... I don't mind. We'd only waste time arguing over it. Jumpy, I'm okay too. See? Can we just go now? Ah, <sighs> fine. All right, let's get going. I'll see you later. Okay, be careful. They climbed into the elevator, and Junpei listened to it creak and rattle on its way to the bottom deck. Only Junpei, Ace, and Lotus were left. As the elevator rumbled out of sight, Ace spoke. Lotus, would you be so kind as to go with me? Go with you? Well, I didn't think people still talked that way outside of the 1950s. <laughs> well, I'm a mother. Would that be a problem for you? Uh, that wasn't what I meant to... I was hoping you would come with me. <laughs> Seriously, though, I was kidding. <laughs> so, where was it you wanted to take me? There's something I wanted to show you. Hey man, what the hell? I'm not important enough? <laughs> well, it's not like that. Once I've shown Lotus, I'll show you. Really? Of course. Ace's smile was friendly. Fine, do whatever you want. Thanks, Junpei. Are you coming, Lotus? Fine. Doesn't look like they're going to be back anytime soon. Inquisitive Lotus face is amazing. It I is. might as well go and see whatever it is you think is so important. Thank you. Well then, shall we go? Ah! <laughs> ah! 
Yeah! I have been- Hello! <laughs> what does that even mean? What is that raid message? <laughs> Hello, Westy. Oh my goodness. That, that was a lot of people. Here we go. Dangerous raided. I don't know. Ah! Okay, let's see. <laughs> Hello, Westy. Hello, Divine. Hello, Dangerous. Hello, Ryan. Bubble Snap. Head Moose in charge. You won. Vivi Moyoi. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you played a demo called Wandering Sword and said Ban Bean Leon about 48 times. Yes, yes, big raid. We will give the shout-outs. The audio stops when I do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're about to get an ending! Well, I hope you enjoyed that demo. <laughs> if, uh, if you people who have come in from Dane's raid do not know who I am, I am Zutaku the Beast. I play video games. <laughs> Lots of them. I mostly do uh, JRPGs, but uh, I am not opposed to variety. I know, I can't believe it. You played a bunch of Next Fest demos. Some good, some misses. Ah, I see. That's you, that's, that happens. Uh, the game that I am currently playing is called Zero Escape, Nine Person, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. I'm sorry. Or 999 for short. Uh, it's a horror visual novel with escape room style puzzles. And per yeah, Personathon is a thing, but I'm not playing a Persona game right now. <laughs> and I am. I, uh, um, um, mm, an ending is about to happen. We are, we are about to go headfirst into an ending. And oh boy, it's a good one. <laughs> All right. Ace turned and began to walk. We're ending the stream right after a raid. Well, eh. yeah, I don't know. I may keep going. I may keep going. I've been going for a while, but I'll probably I'll probably at least set up into the next room. But yeah, this game has multiple endings, and the best way to enjoy it is to get all the endings, because the true ending is locked behind information from some of those other endings. Technically it's only two, but there are a total of six, and I like to get them all because this game is just that good. <laughs> Ace turned and began to walk. Lotus followed. They disappeared into the hallway on the left. Time seemed to drag as Junpei waited for the others to return. Ah, uh, they're so slow. And what's keeping Ace and Lotus? Suddenly, the elevator opened. A single person stood there. Clover! <laughs> I guess you're the first one back. It was only Clover inside. He didn't see the rest. She looked at Junpei, then slowly, purposefully stepped out of the elevator. The door closed behind her. Where's everybody else? What happened? She didn't answer. Instead, her eyes swept the room, and then settled on Junpei. Where are Ace and Lotus? Mm hmm? Oh, uh, Ace said he wanted to show Lotus something, so they went into that hallway. Junpei explained what had happened. Oh, then they went over there? Her voice was small and timid. Yeah, I think so. He repeated his earlier question. So where are June, Santa, and Seven? Why aren't they with you? You really want to know? There was something wrong with her smile. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. 
Here, let me show you. Clover pulled something out of her pocket and tossed it onto the floor at Junpei's feet. Huh? He looked down. On the floor in front of him were three metal rings. Bracelets. Oh my god. Oh, holy shit. Junpei collapsed. No. No, 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 no way. No way. This, this has got to be some kind of joke. This... This can't be real. Junpei's body felt like rubber. Huh. His heart felt like a cold lump in his chest, and his hands shook uncontrollably. Sweat poured down his face. The three bracelets sat there on the floor before him. He could see the numbers on their faces. Three. Seven. And? Huh. Six. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In the past, once the bracelet is taken outside the confine of the ship, or the backside of the mirror's heart rate has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. But... why? Junpei's voice was flat and broken. Clover's response was cold. Revenge for my brother. <laughs> Stop. Not right now. Dangerous. <laughs> he was forced into door three and murdered. You need at least three people to open a door. Who were the two that opened that door with him? It could only have been Santa and Seven. That's why I killed them. Two plus three plus seven equals twelve. One plus two equals three. But... but why? Why did you kill June? Because she tried to protect them. She was in my way. She had to die, too. No. No. Junpei shook his head, trying desperately to wake himself from what had had to be a bad dream. No. No! It couldn't be real. It just couldn't. Hey, Junpei. Felt Clover's hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Her smile was wrong. Horribly wrong. Her face looked like a mask made from stretched human skin. The smile that parted her lips did not extend to her eyes. They were dead and empty. The girl in front of him was no longer the clover he had known. Perhaps she was not even human. Let's go. Her hand reached out toward him. Let's get out of here. Let's leave this ship. Wait, what the hell are you talking about? To... to open a numbered door, you... Yes, I know. You need at least three people. But as long as we have this... Once again, Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. That's... It was another bracelet. Junpei could see the number on the face. Zero. Zero. The Zero Bracelet. You've got, You've got something, something in your, in your pocket. pocket. What, what is it? it? Oh, uh, this? Uh, uh, um, this, this is... is... See? You get it now? If we have the Zero Bracelet, we can leave. You and I can open door 9 with just the two of us. 4 plus 5 plus 0 equals 9. See? So let's go. <sighs> uh... Come on! Hurry up! She shoved out her hand again. <sighs> Junpei looked up at Clover. She had the face of a demon. But there was... something else. There was a holy light that surrounded her. She was both a fierce god and a benevolent goddess filled with love. Junpei? Her voice was soft. 
Her eyes weren't empty anymore. They were deep. So deep that Junpei could feel himself falling into them. Uh. He felt dizzy. There was something oddly bewitching about her. His mind was beginning to crack, and his heart began to melt. Junpei. The hand she was offering him. It looked so soft. So inviting. <sighs> Clover. Junpei reached out with his own trembling hand and closed it over hers. Yeah? <laughs> Junpei writhed in agony. He shuddered and twitched, his body spasming as he went into shock. <laughs> he screamed until his throat was torn and bloody, then screamed more. His cries echoed across the room. Eventually, his movement slowed, then faded. There was no more strength left in Junpei. <laughs> he could feel his body begin to go numb. He no longer felt pain. Uh. He no longer felt anything. Whatever Junpei had been was gone. Last remnants of his mind began to fade. Even as his vision faded to nothingness, he saw Clover. Thanks, Junpei. I'm just gonna borrow this, okay? Her smile was cold. <coughs> What was left of Junpei's conscious mind drifted away. All that was left was a twisted, broken corpse. Back in the captain's quarters. The axe that killed the guy in the captain's quarters with the, the guy that had the zero bracelet. She went back in that room and grabbed the zero bracelet and the axe. Bad end. <laughs> Must be awkward to run. That's what we're commenting on. Not the fact that she just, like... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, there's your ending. Rip Junpei again. Yeah. Would you like to save the info you obtained <laughs> during this playthrough? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> All right. Um we go back here. We have traveled well, we back. We really don't in have time. a choice now. So this, yeah, that was the axe ending. <laughs> you understand? You understand the naming schemes for some of these endings now? <laughs> oh, we're back in adventure you mode. it over enough, or do you need more time? Get out of that. No, we don't like that mode. We like novel Anyway, mode. that's the deal, so think it over. You've got two choices. You can't choose if you choose. So what are you gonna- Seven or- Junpei thought hard after thinking it over. His conclusion was, Shut the fuck up, Santa! I'm going through door three! <laughs> Sorry, Santa, but I still want to go through door three. I think the point of the axe ending, and why it, like, hits so hard, is because you just... It's just... You think back on the way Clover behaves after uh, Snake goes missing. It's just her slow descent into madness. Yeah, if they put all the words in the text box, we would like that mode. This is a sacrifice we must make in order to have all the details, including graphic depiction, <laughs> graphic descriptions of corpses, because we can't show them if they're really, really bad on screen. But we can be as descriptive as possible in the text. Like the crab. <laughs> the white crab. What? That's nuts! You've got to be crazy! Why the hell are you so obsessed with that door? I'm just... 
Snake was the one thread keeping Clover's mind tied together. Well, she, he was her brother, so when you find out that he's dead and somebody killed him, uh. <laughs> Yeah. Whereas the knife ending, we don't really know why Lotus was killed. Well, other than that her bracelet was needed. <laughs> Clover's been like, okay, murder's on the table now. An eye for an eye. <laughs> who can open the, the, the number three door? Okay, they're the ones who did it. <laughs> Junpei paused. He swallowed the words he'd been about to say. It's still not, like, my favorite of the bad endings in this game. There's one. <sighs> that one. There are some people in here who have seen this game before, who have played this game before, know what I am talking about when I reference, um... The achievement is titled off of a Beatles song. That should be enough of a clue. That ending... That ending is fucked! But it's so good! So good! And we're kind- I think we're steered towards it. Now, at least. So... That one's probably, like, the best of the bad endings. You can't say it's the best ending, because the true ending is the best ending. I'm just curious about door three. That's all. And then I like... The other one. <laughs> the other one that I also can't say the name of, but its achievement name is not a pun, so... <laughs> that doesn't explain shit! I've got a reason. I'd be happy to explain it to you if you'll just come with me that, he began walking toward the door. Their curiosity likely getting the better of them, the others followed. A few of them looked a little suspicious, but Junpei told himself that wouldn't matter. He kept walking and kept silent. Eventually, they arrived at the number three door. Junpei stopped. I'm curious about the red. The <laughs> red ending is my favorite, if only that were an ending. <sighs> Seven, would, would you mind authenticating for me? What? Why? Please, just do it. He stared at Junpei for a moment, then grunted and laid his palm heavily on the scanner. Happy? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, man! The number seven has been entered into the red. Next is June. Uh, please touch the red just like seven did. Jumpy, what are you trying to figure out? Ah, yep. I think. Junpei thought about his answer for a moment. I think I might have found another way out. What? What? Really? That got them excited. Just as Junpei had intended. Now please, June. Oh, okay. Seven plus six equals thirteen. One plus three equals four. Those two numbers in the red, Junpei had what he wanted. He casually placed his own hand on the scanner, and the third asterisk blinked on. Four plus five equals nine. All right, the only people who haven't authenticated now are Santa, Clover, and Lotus. So, what's your point? You don't get it. Uh, think about it. Huh? What's the sum of your number and Clover's? Twelve. And what's the digital root of that? Three. Which is Santa's number. By the way, Lotus, uh, what's the number that's currently in the red? Seven plus six plus five equals 18. It would be nine, right? Yes, and what will the digital root be if you add three to that? Three, the door's number. There you go. Hey, wait a minute. What the hell are you up to? I'm not up to anything. I'm just waiting. Waiting for what? He's evil. This devious, devious man. I'm waiting for the balance to shift. Santa, or Lotus and Clover. Once one of you moves, the others won't have a choice. 
so I'm waiting. Junpei laid his hand almost casually on the lever. You son of a bitch! You tricked us! Then all that stuff you were going on about is all bullshit! Bullshit? Huh, I don't think so. Didn't I tell you I'd figured out another way to get out of here? This is it. Why the hell would you do something like this? Junpei glanced at June. Jumpy. He forced the situation because their numbers are admit are are signed into the red, and they can't therefore put the verification in on the other doors. They have to have either Santa or uh, Clover and Lotus authenticate in order to flip the lever, and they'll go through door three. He has forced the situation because he's, they're going to go through the door. <laughs> he's basically saying, make your mind up now who's going through door three. There aren't any other options on the table anymore because Santa, Clover, and Lotus can't make, can't go through the other two doors with theirs, but they can't go through this door. But because they've already verified, somebody has to somebody else has to verify in order to be able to flip the lever that could get the door open. And then they're gonna go through door three. <laughs> they're not gonna wait for it to close. <laughs> you did this just so you could go through the same door as June. That's it? Maybe. Santa was furious. His face was red, and flecks of spit flew from his lips as he spoke. Junpei closed his eyes calmly and then opened them again. So, who's it going to be? Santa? Or Lotus and Clover? Shit! <laughs> Let's go, Clover. Lotus leapt forward. She grabbed Clover by the sleeve and ran for Junpei in the door. Fuck! Caught by surprise, Santa froze for a moment, then shot forward like a bullet from a gun. Lotus had a head start, but Santa had the advantage in size and speed. Almost immediately, he passed Lotus and Clover. Uh, no, wait! Santa did not hesitate. <laughs> he slammed his hand down on the red. This is insane! This isn't right! He glared at Junpei, his chest heaving. Yeah, well, you may be right. Junpei's voice was cold, but not without effort. But. on the red means fuck! How did you know, Santa? <laughs> he turned to the red and pulled the lever. With the sound of metal on metal, the door opened. It would only remain so for nine seconds. There was no time to think. Go! Junpei and his three reluctant companions jumped into the door's gaping mouth, one after another. No sooner did they enter than an all-too-familiar noise sounded from their left wrists. The detonators had activated. Junpei looked back only once and saw Lotus and Clover on the other side of the closing door. Oh, no! <laughs> they stood still, stopped where they had been when Santa reached the red. Well, defeat and desperation on their faces tore at Junpei's heart. Then the door closed, and they were gone. You son of a bitch, Junpei! This isn't fair! Santa rounded on Junpei, lightning cracking his crackling in his eyes and his knuckles white. Do you realize what you just did? You leave them out there, and they can't Shut it! That's enough! It hadn't been Junpei that spoke, but Seven. We gotta find the dead or none of this is gonna matter. The clock was ticking. The dead was their only chance at survival. Unless they could find it and deactivate their detonators, the four of them would be. We got less than a minute left. No time for screwing around. Get moving. Damn it. You and I are not done yet, bastard. They scattered and began to scour the room. The deactivation device was nowhere to be found. Where? 
Where the hell is it? Corridors stretched out in three directions, but everyone was blocked off by a wall of metal. There was only one way out. One other door. Over there! It's gotta be behind the door! Seven ran for the door, a rusty iron thing. His large hands grabbed hold of the handle and pulled. Damn, it's pitch dark inside. Can't see a thing! Junpei stuck his head through the door and looked around the room. No, wait! Almost immediately, he spotted the blinking red light on the right wall. I found it! The dead's right over here! He stepped into the room. Ugh. What? The floor's slippery! He stopped and glanced down at his feet. What was- Hey! What the hell are you doing? There's something... Get over there! Junpei felt Seven's heavy hand against his back and stumbled across the room. The other three piled in behind him. They all felt immediately that something was wrong. Nothing that could be easily identified, only a sense that something terrible shared the room with them. But there was no time to say so. Quick! Get to the dead! They all started running. In the dark, it was hard to tell where the wall was. All they could see was the tiny red light blinking at them over and over and over. <sighs> there it is! In quick succession, they all slammed their hands against the scanner panel. Hmm, suspicious stains <sighs> on the dead there. <sighs> Seven leaned against the wall, gulping air, as his breathing began to return to normal. He glanced at his left wrist and grunted. It... stopped. It stopped. <laughs> Junpei could hear him laughing in the dark, but could barely make out the larger man's face. I don't think I'll ever get used to doing this. What the... <clears throat> the sound of retching came from Santa's direction. What the hell is this smell? This is vile. I'm gonna puke. So desperate they, had they been in their race to the dead that no one had noticed the horrible smell that pervaded the room. It was a terrible, nauseating stench, like burnt and rotten meat. Adrenaline had drowned it out, but now it rolled over Junpei in waves, forcing itself into his nose with every breath he took. Oh, you're right. Oh, this is... <laughs> He felt his stomach clench and bile rise up in his throat. Let's get the lights on first. There's a switch over here. The light that spilled in from the door barely illuminated a small switch plate next to the door. Slowly, with the toll of the last few minutes apparent in his gait, Seven walked towards it. He stopped as he got close and extended his fingers towards the switch. Okay, guys, I'm flipping it on. There was a soft click as the lights came on. <gasps> Just as the light turned on, June took in a short breath and... <coughs> a scream echoes through the room. Junpei's breath stopped in his throat. His heart ceased to beat. Time froze. His mind scrambled to make sense of what he saw before him. What? Hey. Oh, this is... What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh torn from the body sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast, ragged hole had been torn in the torso, and what remained of his intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. We've already read this one, but I'm gonna read it again. <laughs> Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and become stuck there as they dried. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. <sighs> Looks like an explosion. Seven's voice was low and strained. <sighs> Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. Oh god. The, the bone is coming out of his left arm. It's definitely an open fracture. 
It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. The face is the worst. Yeah, you can't even tell who it is. Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with the yellow piping, and the gray slacks. But the clothes are... They were all familiar to Junpei. Is that... Snake? Santa's voice wavered as he spoke, his mouth dry. Oh my god. Finally, Junpei spoke. Why did this happen? No! Suddenly, June was screaming, her voice broken. It was an eerie scream, full of insanity and not entirely human. The weird effect that they added on it. No! 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 She shook her head violently and grabbed fistfuls of her own hair. Junpei could hear the sound of hair tearing. Stop! Calm down! He grabbed for her wrist. <sighs> hey! But as he did, June leapt up and ran. Toward the exit. She screamed at the door, and her fist slammed against it with a hollow sound. Junpei could see drops of blood on her knuckles. Why are you doing these horrible things to us? What did we do to deserve this? June. She screamed again, a desperate, mindless cry. Her fist flailed against the door. June! Junpei couldn't watch anymore. He ran to June and wrapped his arm around her, pulling the screaming girl away from the door. Calm down. No! Get off of me! Let me go! Let me go! <laughs> Please! Calm down! She scrambled for a moment, her legs skittering across the floor. Her resistance didn't last long. As suddenly as her outburst had begun, it was over. The manic energy disappeared, and her body went limp in Junpei's arms. <laughs> June collapsed toward the floor, and Junpei knelt down with her. <laughs> yeah, if you're having second thoughts on jokes, it's probably not a good idea to type them in chat. <laughs> He felt drops of something warm and wet. Was she... crying? A moment later, she began to sob. <laughs> her shoulders shook, and great hot tears rolled down her face like rain. We're gonna be fine. It's gonna be alright, June. It's going to be okay, Connie. Her name was a whisper. I'll be here with you, okay? She nodded once. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Trembling voice pulled at Junpei's heart. He stroked her hair gently. His face was so close to her. The scent of her hair was nostalgic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Do you feel better? Yes, but I'd like to stay here. For a little while, at least. Jumpy's body is so warm. Several minutes passed before June's tears had dried. Junpei stood up. He bent down, put his arms under June's, and helped her to her feet. <sighs> And they didn't speak. 
neither did Seven or Santa. A person was dead. They had died in that room, in a terrible way. Junpei knew there was no way he could make himself forget that. There was no way any of them could forget it. But mourning would do no good. They spread out to search the room, but each felt as if their heart was made of lead. <sighs> we better get to it. Escape room time. <laughs> no time for tears, June. We gotta solve a puzzle. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I feel like I should apologize. <laughs> the people who came in from Pedro's stream, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> So I think we're gonna wrap a bee here. <laughs> but hey, two endings! What's a little trauma? <laughs> we're used to this. <laughs> Hello, Wasabi. <laughs> I've been going for eight hours, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In the first half or quarter, I suppose, at this point, third uh, was not even this game. <laughs> Eight hours and it wasn't even in stream. Yeah, exactly. I play this game on Wednesdays. I'll be playing through the whole series. Uh, I'm just dancing off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll be playing through the whole trilogy and then moving on to its, I guess, it's not, people call it the sister series, but I wouldn't necessarily call it that, but uh, I'll be playing all three of the Zero Escape games every Wednesday after Tales of Symphonia with Heart and Scarf, who's another streamer and VTuber. And once I get through them, I will be moving on to I, the Somnium Files. I haven't figured out if I'm going to be playing Nirvana Initiative, which is the sequel to the Somnium Files. But that's, that's the plan for now. I like this series a lot. Uh, the first one is... It's the little cousin who we see only once a year series. This... This game is so good. <laughs> I think this one's the best of the three, but I like the trilogy a lot. Enjoy this intro. <laughs> it's such a weird game. <laughs> it up here. I already have a raid target because I saw their go live notification not too long ago. So let me prep all of that real quick. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure. Yes, yes. Thank you, the viewers, for watching. And also thank you once again, uh, those of you who stuck around for Dangerous from Dangerous's raid, and Dangerous, thank you for the raid. Wah. Yes, good night, YouTube. We say goodbye to YouTube because I record these locally. <laughs> Axe ending so far is your second favorite ending. That's good. <laughs> We've only seen two, but oh. <sighs> I just 
I don't know. I haven't really... I don't play too many visual novels, but there are quite a few, vi like, horror games that are of the visual novel style. But I don't think... I don't think of the ones that I've played, they match the level of, like, the feelings, you know, you get when you play 999. <laughs> Do you have a spleen headache? <laughs> like, I wouldn't say that it starts off innocuous, but it's just... <sighs> There are lots of emotions that you feel. Like, I don't know if it was telegraphed very well, but I like the axe ending just because of, like, especially depending on which doors you go through. Like, if you go through the doors with Clover, both both doors you choose, if it's seven or eight, you go with Clover. And so you're kind of still interacting with her before the realization that Snake is dead. Like, at first, it's like, oh, Snake is missing, but we gotta move on without him. Maybe he'll be on the other side of those doors. So why would... It was just... <laughs> it's... There's a lot... There's a lot of work that went into some of those, and the music matches it pretty well. But yes, I'm gonna end it here. Yeah, we got knife ending, and we got axe ending, and we got four more endings. Three of which will be, I will try to get before the true ending. So yes. Goodbye, YouTube.